AI. So let's start from initialization of our project. And for these purposes, we need to um, use npx create dash next dash up at latest dash dash ts. What does it mean npx? I'm absolutely sure that everyone know it, <laughs> already know it, yeah, and uh, npx it's execute npm uh, package binaries. Uh, when you uh, execute command uh, with this kind of uh, like a prefix and peaks it means that you trying to uh, call this command from a local node models bin or from a central cache installing any packages needed in order for command to run so it means that you don't need any global dependencies it should uh, install dependencies that you need in local cache on or your node modulus uh, slash dot bin directory so let's uh, call our npx create next up at latest it means we want to install latest version of uh, this install and use latest version of this create next up and dash dash ts it means we uh want to initialize our project with typescript configuration okay let's call this project courses box and if, of course you can see it what is your project name and uh, we want to call it courses box so then we install uh, we installing uh, installing dependencies React React DOM and uh, next. So then ESLint ESLint config next TypeScript and uh, types for React and types for Node. So we installed a Git repository and uh, we uh, yeah everything success created course box at uh, our file passing our file system so then we can run our application using npm run dev or npm uh, start uh, runs all built up in production mode npm run dev start the development server okay okay here we go uh courses box it's basic uh project that next.js provide for us we don't need any additional redundant dependencies we have just dependencies next react and react react dom and dev dependencies type node types react eslint eslint config next and type script uh, by default uh, we have types test uh, config that we install uh, in create uh, using create react uh, create next up so and some basic configuration of yes lint or c dot json okay let's just run our application in dev mode you can see that our application on localhost uh, port 3000 okay and it's quite simple application yeah it's just a page with welcome message welcome to null next.js and uh, then if i just uh, change something let's change something right now in uh, like example page uh, sorry in page index tesix let's change it uh next.js like this Okay, and then let's see what happened. Okay, you can see that uh, right now we have the signs that we put in our code. Okay, everything works fine and uh, we immediately can see uh, changes. So, looks like we've done it. <laughs> okay, see you in the next video. Bye. Hi, and today I just want to show you the structure of our GitHub repo. During all of our coding sessions, you can uh, look through this repository uh, in my account on GitHub, Nikovchinikov uh, slash courses box. And in this uh, repo, um, step by step, we going to develop our uh, application. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can see in readme uh, description per every lesson and pull request per every lesson you can look through all of this code that you of course can reproduce on your environment so and it's very big feature because you always have 
code that we are gonna to develop so please leave any comments if you want and press the star button you can fork our repository without any problems and uh, this kind of stuff uh, will be in your personal repo so it's MIT license you can use it as you want without any problems so thank you see you in the next video and storybook today I wanted to review storybook and install it in my project uh, storybook it's one of the most important tool in your toolkit during the uh, application development process storybook it provides for us um, a toolkit uh, to uh, build uh, components by component driven development and component driven development it's very advanced uh, way to build uh, your UI and uh, what does it mean component driven development you can see that uh, here in this video uh, we have example and uh, storybook it provides for us uh, lots of uh, important stuff like example documentation yeah you can see that we have immediately documentation and we can put here new data that immediately render in our component also we have actions and we can change background and many many uh, more stuff so when you develop components in storybook it's isolated area where you uh, can uh, use all possible scenarios you can uh, provide any data any additional uh, descriptions and if you have an experience with, uh, like example, Material UI or Bootstrap, uh, you can um, look through the documentation of these frameworks. And it's very, very um, cool feature when you can open documentation and documentation it provides for you a whole spec that uh, you can use during your development process and storybook it's kind of tool that uh, give you the uh, possibility to make the same documentation but for your component library uh, first and the most important step on this course we're gonna develop component library how to install storybook and uh, it's very easy you need to install uh, storybook you the in special CLI tools SB in it and provide uh, just flag builder webpack 5 because uh, next just version 11 and later use webpack so uh, you just need to call this uh, CLI tool and everything uh, gonna to install without your uh, <laughs> without really your uh, additional efforts so let's just call this tool you can see that uh, this tool detects project type and it in storybook support to your react app it's automatically detect everything that uh, we need so oh, and then uh, storybook ask uh, for us a question do you want to run uh, the ESLint plugin fix on your project and I believe that we should use this option but before we just need to go to the doc to review what uh, we should do okay and uh, here we have yes link plugin storybook uh what does it mean it's a, a bunch of best practice rules for storybook so you every time when you have something new uh, first of all just look to the yes link and some uh, rules or plugins that you can include in your project just to skip additional uh, routine yeah to uh, format your code on uh, look through some uh, errors that you can automatically fix it's very important to use helpers in this case because development it's very hard and when you can make it a little bit more easier you need to use additional tools so yes link plugin storybook 
it provides for us a bunch of rules and let's take a look to the like example no stories off this rule no stories off it's a kind of um, rule that can fight against a deprecated api from the previous version of storybook and if you if you use storybook um, a long time yeah you you know, of course you know that story soft it's uh, old way old fashion fashion way how can you use a uh, storybook but right now we have advanced api where you just export named make named export in your storybook and it means that your story should um, uh, just include in the storybook this named export okay uh, during the development process we of course uh, gonna to develop uh, stories and i of course uh, gonna to make it much with with more details than right now now we just install this just are uh, installing these tools yeah and i just want to clarify something for you if you want to look through this bunch of rules you always can open this documentation yeah it's very very important so and during the installation process uh we have an error with yeslint plugin the plugin was successfully installed but failed to configure because uh, we should have dot yes lint rc file not with json uh extension format okay so let's just uh add this uh rule to the extent section by our own so and what should we do and in the extent section we should have an array of uh, plugins that we need to extend and here we have plugins for book recommended yeah and we just need to add this plugin to our configuration and everything should works fine okay let's switch to the ed and uh, okay we need to have uh, array and then add one more additional rule plugin storybook recommended we have next core web vitals uh basic rules and plugin storybook recommended right now it's i believe that it's enough for our development process but we uh during this coding sessions i believe that we should extend our configuration more and more so let's take a look what we can do right now and in package json we have a bunch of additional scripts yeah uh we have storybook script and build storybook okay script storybook just run for us storybook and we can look in the browser uh what uh what what do we have yeah and you can see bunch of new dependencies storybook add-on actions essential interaction uh builder webpack 5 manager webpack 5 React testing library and ESLin plugin storybook let's run storybook okay here we go we have left welcome message yeah welcome to storybook and bunch of examples like example button yeah we can click to this button and you can see event that should happen in the moment when we click to this button we have controls and this uh, add-on in storybook it could provide for any component any data any props to be more precise that we need we can change like example a label uh, we can uh, switch some uh some controls yeah so we can uh use some background colors if you want okay and uh, you can see docs for this component it provides for us a bunch of docs that we need okay so uh what really happened yeah because uh i just uh open for you in the browser some demo stories let's take a look what we really installed in our um project and we have stories and what stories is we have component like example button it's usual uh react component yeah you can see that it's a component uh button that um, 
that awaits a bunch of props and then uh, using these props we uh, return some JSX code uh, that gonna to render in our browser uh, UI that we need so and button stories it's a story uh, that uh, we gonna to render in the in the storybook yeah and you can see here uh, a bunch of uh, code that we need to put to make these stories work okay so uh, during the development process we're going to look uh, into the storybook and into the component a little bit more deeper but right now we I believe that we reach our goal we installed this tool and okay so on the next video we're going to develop from zero to hero some components okay so see you next video bye hi so let's run our application for this purpose we have npm run dev and then let's take a look what happened on the web browser okay so and we have um, started a dev server on localhost uh, 3000 let's take a look uh, to the browser and we have this uh, uh, welcome message to Next.js and we have this uh, kind of links yeah and uh, in the footer we have powered by verso and this triangle symbol that we can expect as image yeah it's just an image that we uh, upload from the uh, static uh, from the static data yeah and you can see the pass is just a slash versal uh, dot svg okay so everything looks fine so let's make uh, right now story for this page so it means that we don't need this um, dev server to run all of our application i just want to make storybook to this particular page so it's just an example how we can use uh, our storybook and uh, let's take a look to our file uh, main and um, you can see in uh, director.storybook file main.js and here we have a bunch of uh, settings like example stories and uh, for stories we have a uh, pass where we can uh, detect our storybooks and right now we have pass stories then recursively we are looking for files with extension dot stories dot mdx js jsx test tsx and you can see it right over here so uh also we have here add-ons yeah that we include into our storybook it's storybook add-on links uh, add-on essentials and add-on interactions uh we're going to look to our add-ons uh, during the development process uh, framework in our case we have storybook react because we are using storybook with react on daily basis but actually you can use storybook with angular Vue, or any other kind of frameworks or library so we have uh, builder yeah it's core setting builder webpack 5 because uh, as far as i remember we have next.js uh, that works with webpack 5 and storybook that works with web 5 too as well okay so what do we have uh, in our page in our page we have file index.tsx and here we have home yeah and our home just return a bunch of jsx code that uh, gonna to render something on our web page yeah and we've seen it uh just a moment ago how it looks our home page okay so and uh, also you can see that we have image um, component from the next image yeah it's very important i wanted to uh right now just talk about it a uh, little bit yeah and then we'll see what this image about so how can we make a story we need to create file with extensions dot stories dot tsx okay and in our file home.stories.tsx we just import our home from uh, pages index 
yeah and uh, then uh, we have uh, this uh, code export default and we export title and component so this title it forms a menu on the left uh, side of the storybook and um, uh, component it's about component that we're gonna to use uh, also we have this export uh, named export uh, home page this named export it provides for us name for particular story let's uh, right now just close our dev server and run storybook so everything works fine okay so let's take a look to the browser and we have uh, our storybook and you can uh, recognize these pages yeah home and then home page let's take a look to the storybook again we have title pages slash home it's kind of namespace yeah pages it's uh, uh like a group of story and home it's about a particular bunch of stories and home page in camel case just uh, replaced to home uh, space page yeah it's name of our particular story okay great so and we have absolutely the same page uh, yeah welcome to next js but we have no any image below yeah we have no any image as in our as in our previous example when we run our dev server yeah we just have no this image and what happened with this and uh, it's because uh we have this image component yeah and this image component it provides for us functionality for the image yeah and uh, let's take a look what what is it about yeah what what does it really mean and big part of the next js framework it's image component and image optimization uh we have special component image that we import from next image so this image component uh provides for us uh, functionality for the images uh of the modern web applications it's always um uh, web and images it's always a big part of the troubles that you can face during the development process and um uh, we need to have a uh, perfect support for a very wide range of devices with different uh, screen types with different resolutions and uh, one of the most important stuff right now it's user experience and actually user experience it can be um, expressed as core web vitals uh, as one of the measure of performance and key stuff of your web pages like a first uh, time to first in, um, interaction with the user yeah it's part of uh, user experience of course and uh, actually it's not only about user experience uh, it's about google search ranking because images can impact uh, search ranking as well because it slow down your page uh, in case when you don't uh, have any additional tools for these purposes i mean uh like example uh this feature it's quite uh, simple to explain uh, faster page loads because images are only loaded when they enter uh, the viewport with optional blue wrap placeholders so it can um, increase our performance because uh, you don't need to download all images on all your page just current viewport it's very important stuff uh, improved performance yeah uh, so uh, correctly sized image yeah without any redundant information and stuff like this and uh, image component it's pretty simple to use you just import image from next image and then import uh, pass to the image that you need 
and uh, then you provide uh, image component and src to the image and you can add of course alt and width height blur data url placeholder without any uh, problems yeah it should works fine so image it's quite simple to use but it provides for us a lot of functionality that works uh, very hard instead of us <laughs> so it's very cool First of all, we need to set up static files directory and we have static uh, directory public for our not next and uh, we need to provide flag s and then pass to the static uh, folder. Okay. And the second step, we should switch off all of the optimizations. And in preview.js, we need to add uh, several more strings of code. First of all, let's import everything as next image from the next image, of course. <laughs> then we uh, use constant original next image and take from the next image default export uh, our original next image. And then we just define property in the next image uh, default and it should be configurable true and then as value we use original next image and then we spread all props that we need and we add one more props that it should be unoptimized next image it means that we won't use any optimization in the storybook so let's take a look to our configuration again here we go everything works fine let's open the browser and what do we have we have our image verso in the bottom of our storybook okay everything works fine and looks like we've done it we configure our storybook and images next images works in the storybook as well so it's very big step really okay see you in the next video bye and Prettier. Prettier is an optional code formatter tool. It's just a bunch of rules that as strict as possible. And you don't need anymore to spend time and energy for these kind of issues in your code. So, uh, how to install Prettier uh, in case when we use YesLint right now? First of all, we need to install Prettier as save dev, save exact dependency secondary let's install eslint plugin prettier and then we need to add one more section plugins prettier and rules prettier slash prettier error let's check how it works yeah and let's open like example page and in my ed as you can see i immediately See the feedback because I have YesLint plugin and I have a bunch of problems with uh, quotes, like example, uh, with uh, quotes again, yeah, and uh, like uh, stuff like um, spaces, yeah, because I have uh, too long string here. So let's just save and you can see that everything refactoring instead of me, yeah. And probably I have no any additional troubles. So, okay, everything works fine. And I can, like example, change format in one more file. Okay, you can see that everything looks cool right now. Okay, and looks like we've done it. It's quite simple to install this kind of uh settings to make your code format tools as strict as possible and without any problems you can move forward okay so see you in the next video bye and what is the most biggest problem in web development you have html you have css and you have javascript yeah and there is no uh any glue uh, between these parts you cannot uh, directly write html in javascript or css in javascript that means you cannot uh, make uh, some universal constants or universal approach to support everything in one just one place 
And that is the reason why uh, approach with jQuery and the CSS it was failed when you face with real challenge uh, application, web application. So you need to make a glue between CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. And of course, you know that JSX uh, is uh, there is a way to make your templates inside JavaScript. And we have one more tool that can bring you CSS into JavaScript too. And it's called CSS in JS. Uh, right now we have uh, Emotion JS, one of the most popular way to build uh, uh, CSS in JS way. So Emotion, it's framework agnostic way. You can put it in any kind of uh, framework, for example, Angular, Vue, and stuff like this. But we're going to use it with React. So, and you can see there is an example now, yeah, it's just CSS and then we use this kind of syntax with template literal strings. What did it mean, this kind of template strings? Um, you can make uh, strings in JavaScript like this. And it's actually multi-line uh, strings. You can uh, put here line breaks uh, and uh, you also can use uh, interpolation. It means that you can provide directly to the string variables that you need to interpolate to this string. So it's very convenient way uh, to build uh, multi-line strings with interpolation. And this kind of strings, it provides for us possibility to uh, provide special kind of strings to the function. It calls wrap string. Uh, what does it mean, wrap string? It's property that allows you to access the rough strings as they were entered without processing is escape sequences. It means slash n uh, or slash r, uh, like you can see, yeah, backspace slash b, uh, form feed slash f, and carriage return slash r. You can... Um, this kind of approach just provide you an access to these kind of strings directly. And when you call function uh, with this template literal syntax, then you can take data from this template literal string uh, using the syntax synt strings dot rough and it provides for you a lot of possibility to uh, process these escape sequences by your own. And that is a, there is just a basic way how CSS in JS works. When you uh, call uh, template literal uh, strings like this, yeah, and provide it to the function, function um, could process it by... Uh, by its own mechanism yeah so and um, you can see how it works uh, right now it's just basic uh, function css then you provides a lot of uh, css styles everything that you need and also you can provide uh, uh, variables yeah and that it means that you can interpolate any constants or any javascript data from javascript to CSS. And it's the last uh, point that we really need because uh, React it provides for us possibility to use JSX. Yeah, and it means that you're going to use uh, templates inside your JavaScript. And uh, CSS and JS provides the same uh, way to uh, put everything that you need to the CSS directly. And during coding sessions and uh, during our lessons, we're going to use styled API from the emotion styled package. Yeah? And then uh, we can build uh, styled components that are uh, going to work by uh, this way. Yeah, You just call styled.button and then provide every uh, styles that you need to this button. And you create a button component that you're going to call uh, using JSX. So what should we do to make this stuff works? We need to install uh, styled 
uh, emotion styled and emotion react let's do it so it's quite simple we just install react uh, emotion react and emotion styled as safe dependencies so it means that we are going to install it to the dependencies section okay everything looks cool in the dependencies section we have emotion react and emotion styled so what should we do next and i really like this style it calls pneumorphic elements and uh, during this coding session i want to make a button yeah just a simple button uh like example how we can use styled uh components in css and js let's make one more directory components and directory button in this uh zero so and then i want to make file button and button storage.tsx because we're going to build a component library components library uh, in our up for our application so and it means uh, if i want to have uh, stories uh, close to our component i need to change uh, path to our stories let's make it by this way we just um we're going to have pages stories and component stories so it means that i need to move our home story to the pages then i just drop this demo stories we don't need it so and after these preparations let's make component button okay here we go it's just a styled button so it means we just take button uh component and we export uh, this kind of component that we uh we've created it means that right now i can import it in story and already use it okay right now it's quite simple we just import our button uh that we created and uh, then we uh export default title and component then we create template uh, and uh, we provide uh, default argument uh, children and just button it's just text that should be inside our button okay i already um run our stories and you can see that there is our button yeah it's quite simple component i can put here like example new button yeah or something like this and we can see our component again storybook it's just uh kind of sandbox that we've created uh to make our development process much more easier okay so then i need to add some styles and functionality to the button what should i do and first style that we need it all unset we don't want any styles from the uh, vanilla button uh, of I mean vanilla style of HTML button we just make a uh, whole styles list by our own then let's make it flex and uh, make everything in the center yeah we just align everything in the center user select none just prevent any behavior when user uh, trying to select something yeah select some text like example from this button then let's make cursor pointer just to make a signal for the user that this element you can click then let's set up bunch of sizes that we need and to be honest i'm not a big expert in css styles yeah i just trying to make it by the same way as in our code pen and i just uh, share a link with you uh for this code pen then let's make transition effect uh, to make our changes a little bit more smoother and we're going to add hover effect so Hover effect in this case just change uh, the opacity of the element. Okay, and just to make neomorphic effect, we need to add box shadow like this. Yeah, uh, first color and the second color that provide this effect of you no know, depth or you no know, some kind of shape of this element. So let's check how it looks, and we need to open our storybook 
and here we go right now it's quite 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 looks like our um neomorphic element in the in the our uh cold pen so uh probably i don't want to make this video longer than 10 minutes so uh let's split it to two parts and it was first part and then we're going to move to the second part okay see you in the next video okay and the last part of our functionality that we need to um create it's when we uh click to this button it's kind of different background yeah that makes some insert effect yeah and uh, we can uh, add this kind of behavior very easy let's add this active uh, Zelda class and just put the same box shadow but with inset effect okay it's absolutely the same uh, box shadow but with inset effect so let's check how it looks in the storybook and when I click, you can see this effect of inset, yeah? Uh, it's kind of a uh, shadow that gonna inside of this element, yeah? Inside of these components. Okay, everything looks cool, but we have different kind of buttons, yeah? We have button like primary, like button like this. Let's make different options for the button. And let's make a type uh, the type props that we provide to the button and this type gonna to define what should we provide to the button let's put here children as a type string okay it's quite simple we can provide children typed as string uh, to the button and let's add one more field color this field uh, have uh, it has bunch of uh, options. It could be primary or secondary or danger or warning. So uh, last but not least, we need to handle it. Yeah, we need to handle these props. And I propose to make function get colors that receive color. Yeah, a color and then we return uh, a bunch of css code that change um, styles yeah text color or background for our component button so for this purposes let's make a type color and then provide this type to the props and we mark this uh, argument as color yeah so then uh, we can manipulate with this argument so and here we go we have switch case yeah it just but and just bunch of cases that we need to handle in this function so but what should we return yeah as far as we remember as you remember we have styled api and also we have css uh, that um, uh, we can import from the emotion react so then we can prepare here uh, a bunch of styles that we should return per every uh, button okay and uh, we have this property color then we uh, you the in switch case just detect a particular color that we need for this button and return a bunch of styles that we need last but not least let's uh, make a return type for our function serialized styles yeah and right now we receive color uh, as an argument and return serialized styles so okay everything looks cool but how can we provide here this kind of color and we need to remember about interpolation so we can interpolate here um, uh, a function and inside this function we can take uh, take an access to our props and we have prop color so then we should return uh, get colors and provide here just our prop color so uh, probably yeah and probably we have one more problem yeah because our type color right now it can be undefined because we define here color as a non-required field 
So, and I believe that we should have something by default, yeah? So, we have one more option to make it. Like example, we can set up default props and we can set up by default primary prop to our button, yeah? But it won't change our type, yeah? And we still have problem with this type color. But we can make it this argument as non-required, yeah? And in this case, we should return something by default. Okay, and here we go. When we have no any color, we just uh, return empty CSS. And it won't, won't uh, change our type signature, yeah? And it's just uh, dummy styles, yeah? Just empty style. So, I believe that it should work fine, but instead of this approach, we can return, like example, empty string. Yeah, and it's of course can be problem with uh, type and in this case we should uh, change type yeah uh, several styles or string so but it's of course a little bit more uh, awkward from the types perspective let's just return an empty style I believe that it should works fine and anyway we have default props uh, color primary yeah we always have some color so and here we go let's check it we have our button yeah when we uh just um uh, put cursor to the area of this element we have hover yeah and when we click we have this behavior that uh mark for us click so we have primary secondary danger yeah and we have warning button yeah and right now we have a bunch of useful buttons that we're gonna to uh, use in our application and last but not least we need to make something with click behavior because right now we have no any prop on click let's make it and what should we do with on click of course it should be function yeah and this function receives some event yeah and return void yeah so but what kind of event should happen uh, right over here and we have special type for this kind of stuff so and we have mouse event uh, type from react yeah and this event it should be mouse event and as generic we should provide here uh, a special type yeah and it calls html uh button element so it means uh, that we uh receive here mouse event that should happens on html button element so let's check what uh what it will be yeah what uh, should happen on the storybook side and as far as you can see we have um this kind of component story and we detect what type of uh, button yeah and what types of our what type of arguments do we have yeah so and it means that when we switch to this storybook i believe that after updates of this page we have new uh new feature yeah we can switch to the actions and right now you can see that when we click uh, storybook it has special uh, add-ons that calls actions yeah and we can detect what actions uh, happens on this button with all necessary that data that we need yeah so and um, just for summary right now we have uh, we have some way to build components and a special sandbox that calls storybook inside this storybook we can uh, change props uh, for the components yeah for any component and we have action that we can detect yeah when we click some uh, to some component we just need to describe a particular type for this handler and storybook automatically match this uh, type with this add-on actions so looks like we've done it thank you so let's make a small review right now we initialized our project with next.js and uh, also we include typescript into our next.js framework so we have um, storybook 
yeah and we uh, we've been working with components library yeah and we already have one component button that uh, also includes stories that we can easily uh, look to the browser yeah we just need to open our storybook and right now we have one component with different sets of uh, properties and uh, during our coding sessions we uh, first of all going to develop a full uh, component library uh, that uh, based on this component library we develop our application yeah and uh, first and big step it's initialization and uh, preparation of useful tools that we uh, need that we need for this development so uh, I wish you to stay with me yeah a little bit longer because uh, step by step uh, we going to reach our goals yeah so see you in the next chapter see you bye Hi, and today I wanted to introduce you JSX. First of all, uh, let's take a look to the add-on React Developer Tools. These add-ons provide for us additional functionality that will be very useful in development process. And as you can see, we have uh, components and uh, there is only one component on the page yeah and right now we see it in components uh, tab on our debugger tool also it has profiler and profiler provides for us a functionality to debug uh, performance for our web page from the react perspective of course but today we're going to be using just component section Okay, let's make our uh, first, you know, application component a little bit more uh, clever because <laughs> right now it's just components that returning elements and that's all. First of all, what's element and what's component? Uh, elements and components, it's a basic uh, structure for our application. And element, it's the uh, smallest building block of React apps. Element uh, always start from lowercase. And as you can see, H1 is just an HTML element header of first level. Um, and we could make elements. And also we could render it to every possible items on your web page. And like example, we have element H1 hello world, and we could render it using React DOM render. Put first parameter like element, and then just document get element by ID, provide for us specific element on our web page. And as you can see in our uh, application, it will be by the same way. We have function up, then we just export default uh, up. So in index.tsx we call React DOM render and put inside our application. And second parameter it's uh, document get element by the root. It's root uh, element on our web page. So right now we have our application and bunch of elements inside. Let's uh, uh, just learn our first pattern. It's functional composition or components composition. It's basic way to build our components. We have div, header, image, paragraph and link. Let's make different components for these items. Okay, and right now I made component header. And inside header, we just return header with class name up header. And between curly brackets, we just call props children. And what does it mean, props children? Every element and every component can have their own props and props that uh, should be for every kind of components or element. And like example, inside header we have prop class name. Class name it's a prop that uh, make a class 
CSS class for our element. And on the page, there is, should be a header with class name up header. Curly brackets, we will call it only in case when we wanted to put some kind of JavaScript uh, um, expression. And here we have props.children. Yeah, it's just the uh, parameter props and inside props we have children. But right now we have error from the TypeScript. And TypeScript provides for us information that props implicitly has any type. Yeah? And we need to make it uh, by the appropriate way. And inside React we have functional component type. And functional component, it's a type that receive generic and also it merge generic with some kind of additional props. Yeah. And as you can see in the interface below, it's receive the same prop uh, generic and put it inside props with children. And as you can see, it's just the prop uh, props with children and for every uh, kind of uh, component or element we have prop children and also we have inside our functional component uh, prop types contact types default props and display name okay I don't want to right now just stop at that point and trying to uh, explain what every prop means Right now we just take props that we need in our header. Okay, and we need to put column and uh, put type functional component. And right now, as you can see inside our props, by default we have children. And children, it's React node. It has React node type. It means every possible React element, yeah, or or text, like example, it's uh, children that header can uh, use. So let's call our children here instead of header. Uh, I mean header component instead of header element. And if we made everything right, that it should be the same content on our application. So let's reload it. Okay, and right now we have the same content, but in components, as you can see, we have composition. Inside up, we have header. It means that we have one more components on our web page. Okay. Let's right now make a little bit more refactoring for our components. Because in JavaScript we have features like return uh, without any kind of declaration return. And also we can destructor our props. We just call curly brackets. Inside uh, our curly brackets we just uh, put name for our props. And in this case, we just wanted to take children from our props parameter. Yeah? And um, right now, we just <laughs> reduce code size. And let's make a different component. Yeah? Or let's extend functionality for our header. Inside our header, we have logo. Yeah? And let's put logo inside our header. OK. It means that we just uh, put this logo and after that we just uh, put every kind of children that we want. But it's not a good way because logo is just some kind of global parameter from this import uh, directive and in case when we wanted to have some kind of universal header, it should be a parameter inside our props. And let's make one more prop logo. But right now, property logo doesn't exist on type uh, children react node. Okay, but we remember about generic inside functional component. And let's make interface and uh, let's call it header props. And put inside logo type string. Okay. And we need to put header prop inside our generic for functional component directive. And here we have uh, that right now header just receiving logo. 
And TypeScript provides for us a useful error that property logo is missing in type children element and so on and so far. So we need to put prop logo and let's set up it like logo from our import directive. Okay, right now header just uh, provide logo parameter and children parameter. And here we have it, we have children parameter and logo parameter and we using it inside our header. Let's make one more component. And I wanted to make component link. Component link receiving children, href, target and rel. And I make interface link props. We have href like uh, required parameter, uh, target like non-required parameter and rel like non-required parameter too. Okay. But we fill it by default target blank and rel open, uh, no opener, no referrer. Okay. And inside we have just a link, yeah, and we put inside our parameters, uh, uh, yeah, like props, uh, href, target, and also children between open and close element uh, A. So right now we have one more uh, component link and let's use it. Let's call link. So inside our link we have learn react and also we have href and uh, here we have just the text yeah, and we can put it in double quotes and target. And for the target, it should be a little bit more magical trick. Yeah, we have autocomplete from the TypeScript because we just put inside our interface union type and put every possible uh, position for target blank, self, parent or top. And here we have it. We can use like example blank. So if everything uh, have been done by the appropriate way, we should haven't had any changes in our browser still. And as you can see, we have no any changes, but in section components, we have header and inside header, we have link component. Yeah. And it's just basic way to learn react. It's a components composition and JSX. And it was just J6 at glance. On the next lessons, we look a little bit more deeply to the J6 and learn more. See you in the next video. Bye. Hi, let's today just continue working with our previous example. And I wanted to compile our code. Let's run for this purpose npm run build. And then, as you can see, we create build directory and inside build we have static and inside static we have JS. So let's open main chunk. Okay, I wanted to just beautify it a little bit. And let's take a look to like example, this string. Okay. And it, this kind of code looks very similar for us if we just look through it. Okay, we have a function that return an object and inside this object we have a bunch of parameters and first one is just a div and then object again and inside this object we have keys class name up then children and inside children we have something like object ij6 but instead of string with name of element we have uh, some kind of javascript um, object yeah it's just kind of variable so and then we have a bunch of properties inside these uh, parameters yeah we have logo children and stuff like this okay let's take a look for the first string we have div and class name up okay and here we have it we have div and class name up yeah it's 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 very similar then we have header logo and logo like argument for our property logo okay and here we have it we have children 
L and logo type some kind of variable and children yeah but just let's um, just won't be uh, bothering by the short names for variables because it's just minifier minifier just destruct all the possible <laughs> variable long name and trying to minify it okay and here we have just L and let's take a look what happened inside this L yeah and right now we have 100% match we have div class name up and some kind of component with logo uh, and prop logo let's take a look to the L okay and here we have a function that destructuring children and logo and then just return for us some kind of header this class name up header and the bunch of children okay let's look at the our header okay and here we have it we have destructurization children and logo and then just return header with class name up header okay and you can find 100% matches uh, with props and um, it looks like the same code yeah but this code just compiled yeah of course and Babel just transform every j6 to this kind of object calls and put inside name for our elements or in case when it component it put variable that uh, show uh, our component yeah okay and let's uh, like example take a look again to our uh, application okay and here we have it yeah we have element name then properties and in prop children we have component l yeah and here we have it we have element and instead of l we have header of course with logo logo and the same stuff right over here okay it means that during the compilation process every every kind of jsx code just compiled to this kind of notation object i jsx and then just put name for our element or link to our component yeah so let's take a look a little bit more through the documentation and uh in version react 17 we have new j6 transform and this new j6 transform just provide for us a little bit different flow instead of previous version in previous version we always call react create element api for every kind of j6 uh, tag inside our code yeah and here we have an example yeah we need to import react from react for every file where we are going to be using every kind of j6 code and so when uh, our compilator uh, have done his uh, job yeah it means that we will just replace h1 by react create element and put name for our element inside uh, our create element like first parameters then it should be props and after that it's just a children item yeah so we need to import react from react per every file when we're gonna to be using react j6 code style uh, for version below than 17 and in version 17 it was a big change because we don't need anymore to import react from react per each file where we uh, gonna to be using our j6 because uh, right now we have just uh, some kind of service variable that mark like underscore j6 or j6 and uh, we just uh, insert it actually compiler inserted it instead of us yeah we don't need to ins uh, put some kind of import react from react and this kind of notation should be per each file by automatical mode and right now we have name for our of course uh, element and also children not third parameter anymore like in a previous version of create element right now it's just inside our props object as usual object property yeah so that was the main difference between a uh, previous version of compilator and uh, probably uh, 
we just need to move to the next lessons. Okay, see you in the next lessons. Bye. My point of view that uh, professional computer programming it's constantly about test cases because you need to make uh, a quick recheck and have some uh, confidence uh, about your code and only test cases uh, would provide you this uh, knowledge and this power just to have immediate feedback from your code and let's today install jest and react testing library so we install jest testing library slash react and testing library slash just done so it's just first and big step okay we can check it and we have testing library just dom and testing library react and just in dev dependencies and then we need to create jest.config.js with this kind of content uh, first of all we require next jest package then we create just config and here we have just one option directory and we point to the root of our file system as a directory where our next just uh, installed yeah whereas structure of our project uh, yeah so and then we create just config we uh, provide directories for the modules uh, so and test environment we provide just environment uh, GS DOM yeah so then we call create just config and provide here our bunch of uh, custom options so uh, and it's actually one uh, of the biggest step in this uh, settings second one we should uh, make uh, this option set up files after env let's just uncomment this string and our setup files after env just uh, make a, a point to the jazz.setup.js and here we should import testing library just dom extend expect what does it mean just dom is a library uh, that provides for you uh, custom just mushers and you can use a bunch of uh, test matchers that could be applicable for the DOM elements like example to be disabled to be enabled or uh, to be in the document yeah it's kind of um, additional tools that provides for you a very convenient matchers that will be useful during our coding session even today so and to make this things works we need just to include uh, this option setup files after env and import this uh, bunch of uh, additional matchers that just extends uh, possibility of possibilities of our expect api so let's create our first test uh, file yeah and here we should put a bunch of test cases that we need to check our button so and what should we check and uh, just uh, provides for us api uh, describe each yeah describe is just description for the bunch of test cases for the some slice uh, if you want of test cases and then it uh, just uh, make a particular test case like example we want to um, check something to the button component and then particular test case we want to check render yeah how can we check render in the testing library react we have render method and this method uh, could uh, it, it can render something on the screen let's import our button component and then we can call our render methods and provide here our jsx syntax yeah just render our button but we can easily see that right now we have missing uh, the following properties uh, children and on click so it means that we should provide here some uh, children let's uh, provide just a text like button and then we need to provide on click 
In Jest, we have convenient way to do this. We can just create a mock function. For these purposes, we need to call Jest.Function and then provide this prop right over here. Yeah, just provide our own click handler. So, and right now, everything looks cool. Okay, and for the render uh, function, we have uh, this kind of method as fragment. And we can easily uh, use it to detect uh, our render behavior. Yeah, as fragment, it provides for us syntax uh, that we going to use uh, for the fragment comparison. Yeah, to match snapshots. This kind of uh, method just uh, trying to compare previous snapshot and next snapshot. Let's right now uh, call this test case. And we will see what result uh, it will be. Let's add one more script to the script section. We call it test. So, and we can uh, run uh, all of test cases for our projects. Just call npm test. And right now, I have one snapshot written. Yeah, and you can easily see it. Yeah, it's just kind of snapshot that we expected yeah right now we can uh, run test case again and you can see that we compare our previous snapshot and the next one and everything looks cool uh, but when we like example change text right over here and then run our test again we compare previous snapshot and the next one and right now on the snapshot we have this text yeah as children uh, we have just button yeah and for our render we have button 2 it means that our snapshots are different and we need to regenerate our snapshots or just uh, review our changes and roll back so and you can see that everything works fine let's move a little bit more forward and check on click callback so for these purposes we need to make again uh, our uh, function yeah our mock function so then we can call render and provide our mock function to the render so and how can we check our on click handler we have one more thing in testing library react it's called screen and screen it provides for us API uh, that we can use to uh, give an access to the DOM that render function uh, draw on the some virtual uh, browser yeah some virtual screen that we're gonna to use. So and how is it works? I have method screen dot debug and when I call test cases then we will see what result it will be yeah, on the screen we have this lock yeah and we have uh, this kind of dom uh, that uh, react testing library render on some virtual screen and we can uh, give an access to the screen and like example find some elements and make some actions here we have an example we just uh, take and just get an element by row yeah we wanted to uh, um, find element by row it's of course a stability object model and right now we have only one element uh, button on this virtual screen and it should be our button in uh, element and we have one more useful tool testing library user event this kind of library provides for us API that emulate uh, user actions. Yeah, so and we can install it. Then we should import it and let's call user event click and provide here an element that we wanted to click. And last but not least, after click, our dumb function, our mock function should be called. So and let's call expect and provide here our dumb function on click and then we have to have um, been called to have uh, been called 
And this method just gonna to check uh, after our manipulation with DOM and this click. Uh, was it, yeah, real uh, behavior that we expected, yeah, or not? So let's call npm test. And then we'll see that our on click callback works fine as we expected. So, and it's very important thing in this uh, user event library. We have default fire event in testing library React, but it won't work as real user yeah it's just emulate some events yeah like example when we call fire event change and then trying to change some text box and provide here new value it won't be behavior as user uh yeah regular user does it it, it should be k press yeah that actually happens after several events like k down k up yeah so it's it's a bunch of actions that hidden yeah from us and fire event cannot uh, emulate this kind of behavior and uh, user event it's actually type like real user with all of this stuff that real user should do so and it's very important to make it as uh, as close as possible to the real user so and that's the reason why we're going to use user event instead of fire event and if you want more details you can check this kind of tutorial that absolutely um, cover all of these topics so uh, just to be on the same page with you so today we've done our uh, lesson because we have uh, reached our goals we have first test cases we installed just so see you in the next video Bye. Let's they learn one more thing. And we have a DOM background. And when you uh, choose, for like example, dark background or light, you can see the result uh, of the rendering your component for this particular background. And for the dark background, you can see that right now we have a trouble. Yeah, it's kind of shadow that shouldn't be light it should be dark to make this neo morphism style so we need to use it and probably we need to have two options for this component dark and light so let's make it in the preview we can read what background we are using and for these purposes we have this uh, pattern we should export decorators and put in the array a bunch of decorators that we want to apply for our story. And we have two parameters, story and context. Context, uh, it provides for you, like example, globals, uh, variables, yeah, and we can read, like example, backgrounds that we are going to use in this uh, storybook. So, and uh, just to be sure that we can uh, read this data, I just uh, look at the console.log. Okay, here we go. We have by default uh, undefined, yeah, but when we apply, like example, black, it should be value. Yeah, it's, it's not a black, it's dark gray. Or when we apply light, we have this light background that we can read. So it's very helpful for us to make this um, tamization. First of all, let's add to the backgrounds our values that we need. And we provide by default, okay, let's say that it should be uh, light or dark, what do we need? Uh, anyway, then we should add values, and for the dark we provide value like this. It's kind of color that should be applied uh, for the background and light that we are of course going to use for the light background too. So our behavior is different now, yeah. And when we uh, uh, by default, just open storybook, we have dark background. When we switch to the light, you can see the different background color. 
Also, we of course can read value that's gonna be applied for our background. So, we have special thing in uh, emotion. We have theme uh, temp, uh, theme provider, yeah, and this provider uh, like a global. Um, context that you're going to use per every component that you need so and for this uh, theme provider we should uh, put some data so we should wrap our story by this uh, theme provider and then uh, one more thing we should provide here a theme uh, a theme yeah and uh, for this uh, kind of stuff we need to read background yeah and set up theme according with this kind of background okay here we go i've done in styles themes uh these two theme dark and light yeah and you can see how it works i just uh, uh make a type based on dark yeah and we have this type uh, up theme and then I just provide this type to the light theme and export, of course, uh, our themes like a record. And we have a string that mark our name for our team and up team that just a type for the value of this object. So we can easily uh, find by this uh, prop background our team. Uh, and apply it for the theme provider uh, right over here let's right now import our themes yeah that i uh, put right over here in styles themes yeah you can see it again yeah it's just a bunch of uh, data yeah about a particular um, colors so and then in the preview we just import these themes from uh, styles themes okay so then we need to find what kind of theme we should apply here let's create a variable background and read context global backgrounds value in case when we have this value we just set up uh, this variable by this value in case when uh, we have no we read parameters background default color that i put right over here yeah and we have default background dark and default color this dark red uh, gray okay so then we need to uh, uh make a team yeah we need to, to uh put this data about color colors that we need and in themes we can look at this uh to option dark and light and we have this background uh, field yeah with this dark gray or this white color so we just need to filter and find uh, our theme according with this background because of this themes is just a kind of object we just uh, make it as array yeah just take values from this object and find theme with background that uh, should match with background that we uh, read from the globals or from default color so it means that here we go yeah it should be our theme that we apply so looks like we've done our first step to read data from the user input and then set up it to the theme provider okay okay from the interpolated value we can use a function yeah you can see it right over here i just interpolate value so then i just create a function and you can see that we have uh in this function okay let's put here uh arrow and errors arrow so and then there is should be theme yeah and this uh, variable that we can use per every styled component yeah we have this uh, global provider that provide per every uh, component uh, in our styled uh, this value theme yeah that we can easily use so and then let's just uh, make here one more template string and then instead of these colors 
we can put our box shadow background and you can look to this uh, theme and we have shadow one and shadow two in both cases yeah so let's read our variables uh, com uh, theme components shadow one and shadow two and put it right over here again okay, here we go but right now we can see these troubles yeah property components does not exist on type theme what should we do and for this kind of case we can use a motion definition type script file where we need to import our emotion react then we take up theme as far as i remember we just uh make a type based on our uh team uh, description and then we should export interface theme extends up theme yeah and uh, this kind of approach that we're going to use based on uh, some uh, issues on github yeah you can see it in the documentation yeah in the topic of type script yeah and here we go yeah that's our solution to make this things works and i can show you that this kind of things works yeah let's check it and when i open it of course <laughs> it's, it's always constantly during development process we can face with some troubles yeah but this trouble it's uh, some kind of trouble that i really expected yeah because uh, previously I found uh, a solution for this uh, trouble on the GitHub. We just need to add this uh, kind of option features emotion alias false. Yeah, I'm, I've done it according with this open issues. Yeah, and you can see the team provider does not work with emotion style. It's still open. Uh, it's still open yeah and uh, you can see this whole conversation if you wanted to look through the details yeah but let's check our solution and looks like we've done it yeah everything works fine okay i can change background yeah and we can see that our shadow just immediately uh, uh, looks cool yeah without any troubles but we can switch our uh, you know <laughs> our um, yeah our uh, color and you can see that uh, sometimes it's still some troubles yeah that we need to fix okay let's take a look what need of additional colors do we need to add let's make synchronization between this theme and this active yeah because we actually have absolutely the same bunch of styles but it's just inset prop right over here yeah that we need to add so then uh we have this get colors and this function get colors doesn't depend on uh you know on the team and we need to fix it we can provide to the get colors additional um uh, parameter theme so and then we need to handle it into our function so let's add this argument and import our type from the stylus themes and then we can use it in our function okay looks like this it should works fine but i need to fix this position for this argument yeah because optional argument uh couldn't be yeah first so and we need to fix position of the arguments right over here so let's take a look uh what happened in our browser so it looks like this kind of behavior works fine yeah and when we switch to the dock it looks fine but for the secondary we have this active position uh but we have some troubles with shadow in non-active position Oh, and probably I can see one more issue. I need to add this separator, yeah, because without it, we could mess some styles. So let's switch to the browser and check it. Okay, looks like we fix it. Yeah, everything looks fine for the dark team, for the light team, and for every possible scenario. Yeah, we can switch again to the dark. Okay. 
Yeah, looks like we've done it. Yeah, our uh, neomorphism style applies per every theme. K looks very, very interesting. So, see you. I'm not a big fan of this kind of notation. I mean, relative import. Because it just binds you to some particular places in your file system. And it could be very, uh, and it would be very, very uh, painful to refactor some paths in, uh, pass in your file system. So, what alternatives uh, do we have? In TypeScript, we have this pass directive. And uh, we can add uh, a bunch of options that we want. And I want just to make ls at uh, that uh, mark me just a root of my file system. So, and it's quite simple to use at right over here. And we can see that immediately we have this ls in our code. Yeah, and I don't need this relative import style anymore. And how can I add some uh, global styles to the storybook? Like example, right now I wanted to use a uh, font. Yeah. So and uh, I can show you to make some, uh, like example, link uh, in the HTML header. I just need to add preview dash um, header uh, dash head. So, and then I can add link. And like example, this link just download Google font from the Google APIs. And we need this kind of font pop-ins. So, then uh, let's add to the styles a uh, new file, global.ts. And here we have uh, our styles that we need. And we want to apply per every element font family poppins send serif. Okay, so uh, we export these global styles. Then in preview.js we can import our global styles. And we have one more useful component global in emotion react that we can apply to the our to our temp theme provider like example. And we just need to add these global styles and uh, uh, put here our global styles that we've already created right over here. Okay, but probably we need to rename this with theme provider. Or let's say that we can make even better. We can make one more decorator with global styles. Yeah. And then we just make by the same pattern as before. We just <clears throat> put here story and our global styles and wrap it to the fragment. Yeah. And right now this kind of uh, second decorator, it provides for us uh, functionality to this global styles. Now we can easily check that we download from the fonts Google APIs our font uh, poppins, and then we can see that there is a font that we want. Yeah, our font and our global styles is already applied per every components in our storybook. Yeah, we can just select root item, and you can see font family poppins and serif. Yeah. So, and I don't like this style repetition because looks like we always uh, gonna to have the same box shadow and we can make a universal helper that we apply per every com future, uh, future component, yeah? And looks like we need two more function box shadow that receive uh, color one and color two or I can uh, make better name uh, shadow uh, color one and uh, shadow color 2 yeah so and inset prop that will be just boolean value and then we just uh, make uh, some particular decision should we put this inset string or not yeah and let's make one more uh, universal style transition yeah just to be uh, with the same uh, transition per all of our components. Now let's import box shadow and transition and let's apply 
it right over here. So, and during the development process I faced with this trouble, module not found, cannot resolve at styles helpers. So, it means that our LSS is not working by this way <laughs> as we want, yeah? And I tried to add here base URL, uh, but it doesn't work, so probably I need to find a better solution and I already... I've done it, yeah? I need to add one more thing. In the documentation of Storybook we have special section TypeScript model resolution. And we need to install test config pass webpack plugin, yeah? And then we need to add to the section webpack final config like this. Let's do this! So, and what does it mean, yeah? We just, uh, based on this TS config uh, pass webpack plugin, we provide an analysis to the webpack, yeah? And Storybook, it has own uh, TypeScript, or I mean webpack uh, configurations that we can extend using this section webpack final. And right now we just add this TS config pass plugin that extend our uh, basic configuration. Okay, here we go. We just uh, require, just import this test config pass plugin, then provide it to the webpack final, and we run our storybook, and I can show you the result. Yeah, everything looks cool. Yeah, I just reload page. And you can see uh, there should be style transition, and we can detect it right over here. Yeah, here is a, here we are. Yeah, it's our transition, and looks like this transition works fine. So you can see that we import transition right over here from components styles. Yeah, and here we are. Yeah, that's our. Um, transition and we have box shadow so we need right now to use this box shadow instead of uh, this bunch of styles so and here we go right now we just uh, put here our transition then we provide to the box shadow uh, first and second color yeah and in this in case of active we just set in set property to the box shadow let's check it in the browser so oh, if everything uh, works, we should see absolutely the same behavior as before. Yeah, when I change, uh, yeah, colors or when I change, um, our as you can see, yeah, I change my uh, background. Everything works fine. Yeah, and looks like transition works fine. So let's check our styles. You can see uh, the transition property and box shadow, yeah, so, and also we can check uh, our pseudo, and you can see there is our property inset to the box shadow when we click to this box, yeah, so you can see it, yeah, it works fine. So, and for the secondary, it works fine, yeah, and for the light background, it still works fine, okay, looks like we've done it. So, thank you. Before we move forward, I just watch to the console output and find this message that uh, storybook uh, mark as deprecated static dear CLI flag. A flag. So, let's switch to the browser and I can show you the new way to put these options. And we have static dears and we can provide where we should serve our static. So, it means we can easily fix this message. As far as I remember, we have this flag serve public. Yeah, I can just drop this flag and then we can put it to the static dears and mark as a public directory right over here let's check is it works is it works fine or not we can easily check our image in the home uh, story yeah and you can see we have expected behavior yeah our image right now this triangle uh, looks fine so we fix this problem, let's move forward.
For the next step, let's run npm test. And we'll see this error that test suits has been fault when we trying to import this box shadow and transition. Looks like we have no any aliases at all in the jest. So what should we do? And for these purposes, we can add model ma name mapper, and then we need to provide here our mapper. Yeah, we wanted to map our add symbol and then make a group. And uh, uh, based on this group, we just add root directory and this uh, first group after this root directory. It means we just uh, completely detect this pass after add and put it to the root dir. So let's run it again. And we have new trouble, yeah, when we trying to read uh, our color from themes we have undefined yeah and it looks like we have no any themes in jest so how can we fix it and i found only one way to do this we need to take render uh, from the testing library react we need to import team provider and then we need to import our themes from styles uh, themes, themes. Yeah, as far as I remember, we created this object with dark and light theme. So then we have our uh, wrapper component. Yeah, this wrapper that we mark as functional component using this type FC from the React. Yeah, and we receive our children. So then we uh, wrap our children by theme, theme provider and provide here our theme, theme uh, from Teams Lite. Yeah? Uh, in the jest, we gonna to test only one theme, yeah? only light mode. But actually, uh, we probably will see. Yeah? Right now, it's just only light theme. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep it like this. So, and then we need to create custom render. And our custom render, it, ex uh, expect to, it expects two properties, UI and options. So, UI, it's mark like uh, React element and options like uh, render option, options type. And React element, of course, from React and render options from testing library React. We return render, yeah, as first as the first parameter we have UI. And for the second we provide this wrapper and we just spread a bunch of options. So then we re-export everything and overwrite render method. In instead of uh, our render, we right now have our custom render that wrap everything by this wrapper. So it means that we create these utils that wrap everything that we need and we can use it in our uh, test cases. So I believe if we want to export render and screen from testing library React and make it uh, and we'll make it from test utils, everything should work fine. Let's run our test cases. Okay, and we will see that right now we have <laughs> smaller trouble yeah because right now we have uh, just uh, trouble to compare previous snapshot but of course we already changed our classes and we just need to regenerate our snapshots let's make it with uh, flag uh, dash u and you can see that we overwrite our previous snapshot and right now we can rerun our test cases and everything works fine yeah we just regenerate our styles yeah and it means of course from the uh, snapshot perspective we should have new class so right now we provide to the test utils uh, theme provider yeah and during our coding sessions we gonna to use render and screen that we've patched in this test utils okay so thank you I want to show you one more way how you can write test cases in Storybook directly. It calls add-on interactions. And you need to add Storybook Jest and Storybook Testing Library. It's just wrappers 
uh, under Jest and React Testing Library. So let's install these extensions. Then we need to add add-on interactions to the add-on section in file main.js. So it means that we already we've already implemented it and we can right now use it in our storybooks. Let's refactor our storybook a little bit to make these things works. Let's move our uh, basic button argument children to the export default. It means that we put these children by default per every story. So we have one more way how can we organize our story. Yeah? We have this type component story that we can use to make uh, this kind of pattern template and then we just copy this template per every new story and use a new bunch of properties that we need per particular story. Second approach is to use component story object. And, and here we go. Yeah. So we have this primary button. Yeah. Instead of this component story, we gonna to use component story object. We mark our primary uh, button as component story object. And then we can provide here additional props. To make test cases in Storybook, we need to add the import expect from Storybook Jest. It's absolutely the same stuff as uh, native expect in Jest. Yeah, it's just kind of wrapper that provides you possibility to use this expect in Storybook test cases. Also, have screen and user event that, of course, just a wrapper under testing library React testing library. Yeah, so and right now to make this test case, we need to add one more prop to primary button. This props calls it calls play, yeah, and we provide it, uh, provide to the play a sync function and we receive argument, yeah, arguments. This arguments it's what we have in our story, yeah, and as you can see, we have arguments children that we already set it up like button yes yeah, kind of content that we should draw inside our component and i wanted to remind you that we have this bunch of props children color and on click prop on click it's kind of handler that we can use in our story yeah you can uh remember that when we open story we have a don action yeah and storybook it can detect type of the props and then match it to some particular actions handler and stuff like this so in this particular test case, you can see that we receive these arguments and then we call user event dot click and uh, we just click uh, to element button. Yeah, because on the screen we already have this button component that should be in this story. We just click to this button and then we are going to expect that our arguments on click to have been called because this uh, this add-on interactions it m it it could match these arguments and it could detect this particular handler it because on click is just a function type and uh, then provide just mock function per every handler so we can then after we uh, find this button component we can check that our on click prop to have been called so and that's just a basic example of test case uh, in interactions add-on so let's run our storybook and check how it looks and here we go we have this action yeah as far as you remember it's already uh, matched by the storybook with some handlers like example on click yeah and interactions interactions it's kind of our scenario testing scenario that we provided to the play property and you can see that we click 
to this uh, element button and then we expect that our on click uh, function to have been called and everything works fine but what happened what what should happen when we fail our test cases let's like example uh, check to have been called times and just provide here uh, two it means that we're gonna to expect that our mock function to have been called two times so let's check what what it will be eh? and you can see that here we, here we have a trouble yeah we can immediate we have immediate feedback that we failed our test case yeah because we expect that we should call this function two times but in reality we have only one call so and uh, of course it's just uh, <laughs> we just expect this kind of stop yeah because we uh, just uh, want to make this test case broken yeah so and right now i just need to uh just roll back our changes yeah but you can see immediate feedback from the storybook yeah if you have some troubles with test cases so and uh, we just uh, during this development process we have only one story yeah only this basic primary button but what if we want to have every possible scenario for this button i just wanted to add um, all test cases that depend on color for this button like example let's add secondary button yeah and i want to make an um, the same yeah like extension of previous test case because i don't want to uh reproduce this play test case per every story yeah we just need to replace an arguments yeah and in our case we need to replace only one argument let's just uh provide here secondary then by the same way let's reproduce uh, two more scenarios so and here we go we have four stories with uh that extends our primary button yes yeah, that just implement uh the same uh props but we just rewrite arguments yeah in if our uh primary button uh, it has color primary secondary it has color secondary and by the same way for the warning and danger buttons so let's check how it looks in our storybook and here we go we have danger button we have primary button secondary button warning button and absolutely the same behavior per every story yeah we have the same controls we have the same uh, actions uh, top and interactions top where we have this kind of test cases that we've implemented in our storybook so looks like we've reached our goal and we've done it okay so see you bye before we move forward, I want to add this line of configuration to the dot yes lint ignore. It means that we should include to the check to the check for yes lint uh, this directory dot storybook. And right now I've already done refactoring, yeah, and we make the same uh, code formatting applied the same format formatting uh, rules uh, for all of our uh, configuration files in directory.storybook and then i want to add this beautiful accessibility add-on to our storybook so let's first of all install it and then let's add to the add-ons section one more add-on add-on accessibility so let's run our storybook and let's take a look to our demo page uh, where we have this demo welcome message from next.js let's switch to the new top accessibility and we can see that we have 16 uh, rules that has passed yeah it's uh about a lot of uh in interesting and uh very important thing like example image alt yeah or uh like example heading level should only increase by one yeah like example 
But we have one trouble. Element must have sufficient color contrast. Yeah, because right now you can see that we have not sufficient color contrast. Yeah, we have background, this dark background, and this kind of dark uh, font color. So it could be some trouble to understand what uh, what what text. Yeah, what text do we have? In case when we switch to light mode, yeah, we probably still have one uh, trouble with one element, yeah, where we have link, yeah, to the nextjs.org and probably we need to add more contrast, yeah, and we have recommendation, what should we fix, yeah. Uh, so, and uh, this demo page we won't fix because it's kind of dummy hello world yeah we don't need to fix this page we gonna to look to our button that we've already done yeah and like example our uh, button yeah danger button right now on a light uh, background and on the dark background we have four past uh, cases and no any uh, errors or um, i know warnings yeah the same for the secondary button yeah we can switch uh our uh, easily switch our uh, background and we can see that we have four uh past uh checks from the accessibility side okay and the same for the warning button yeah okay you can see that our button works fine and looks uh good per every background and per every check so it's very important and during the development process we are constantly going to look to this tab and check um, that we um, won't have any future trouble with our components yeah so uh, two uh, helpers we've already added its uh, accessibility and interactions we constantly going to develop our test cases in interactions and check our accessibility using this top accessibility so looks like we've reached our goal so um see you what chromatic is and we can see right over here motto of chromatic and chromatic automates gathering ui feedback visual testing and documentation so every time when you face with some kind of tools that can make your life easier you need to implement it and from our side chromatic as uh, visual regression testing tool it's one of the most important thing yeah because we always gonna work with ui stuff yeah and we uh wanted to know uh instant feedback yeah should we change something yeah do we have some changes that affects visual part so and let's install this tool and then review it I can show you my own uh, projects. Yeah, I have Minesweeper project and I can add one more project without any problems. Uh, because my project is already on the GitHub, I need to choose from GitHub and then uh, select my project courses box. So when I can see the instruction, what should I do to make uh, chromatic works on my uh, environment? First of all, let's install Chromatic and then let's call Chromatic CLI with our project token and then we will see how Chromatic works, yeah? Now we just uh, are building our storybook. So then after build, we publish our build to the storybook. Yeah, I mean our build storybook to the Chromatic side. You can see that right now we have publishing step. Then Chromatic verifying our storybook. And it means Chromatic just uh, make uh, are making screenshots and then compare previous version of the screenshot with the next one. Yeah, And if we have some visual difference, Chromatic can easily detect it. So would you like me to add it for you, uh, Chromatic Script? Okay, let's add it to the script section. 
and chromatic just remind me that we can use a special kind of variable chromatic uh, underscore project underscore token that we can add to the ci environment and we'll do it of course uh, but for the future lesson when we are going to work with ci tools de deployment and stuff like this Right now we can see that we published uh, a storybook, yeah, and uh, we can catch UI difference only when we deploy next version of uh, our storybooks. So let's do some changes. Let's add here several exclamation marks, yeah, in next.js uh, link. So uh, then we need to uh, make a commit yeah so right now uh, let's make uh, additional commit I just gonna to commit uh, my changes okay so visual uh, regression check and then let's uh, call npm run chromatic because you can see that we have this script in the script section, yeah, chromatic. So we can easily call npm run chromatic. As you can see right now, we just have this uh, project token directly in the package JSON. It's not secure way, yeah, but right now uh, we just uh, keep it like this. And for the future lesson, we will change it on the CI side. We have the same bunch of steps building storybook then publishing our build uh, to the chromatic side and uh, then just uh, visual regression stuff that chromatic just trying to find a regression between previous version of uh, our storybook and the next one so you can see that chromatic found one visual change that we can review let's move to the browser side and we have one component changed yeah and this kind of stuff that like um you know introduction to the chromatic yeah step by step it provides for us a description of what we can do yeah right now uh, you can see what difference is yeah we just change we have changed some text right over here we added these two exclamation marks yeah and that's our difference between previous version and the next one so uh, you can see this tutorial yeah we can accept change and continue yeah so also we can uh, put some comments yeah and if you have some teamwork it's very cool uh you can leave uh, some feedback yeah for your uh, colleagues about this visual stuff and uh, it's very helpful for the teamwork when you're going to develop components library so then um uh, it's of course uh, it, it it just provides for us information about how can we merge uh, what we can do and let's move to the component and let's make this kind of review so uh you can see that right now i've already accept our changes yeah you can see that we can actually uh, uh roll back these changes yeah and you'll see uh this status uh changed back to unreviewed yes yeah, so uh, then you can move again to this page and accept or deny changes uh, also you can leave uh, comments yeah uh, like example uh, looks great yeah so that's kind of comment that i can leave so you can see the uh, difference in, on the snapshot side uh, i mean uh, dom difference yeah you can see it in uh, below yeah under this uh, image difference you can see a uh, difference in the dom yeah so and then you can accept or deny these changes okay so and right now when i accepted these changes our build looks cool yeah you can see a uh, history of builds yeah uh, per every step per every deploy okay it's very helpful when you can uh, detect visual regression because on the front end side uh, most of the 
some noisy box something uh, about uh, changes in style yeah because it's always painful to find some visual stuff to find some uh, broken pixels yeah or when your design just uh, haven't some pixel perfect style so in chromatic it's can it this tool can automate this kind of routine okay and I just suggest that you you should just you could just use it yeah and it can change your development process so thank you at the end of this section i want to make small summary about what we have done on this stage so and i want to remind you about this repo courses box you can uh, uh, press star button you can make a fork it's very very important for me yeah because it's motivation to move forward with this project so you can look through the readme and uh, per ev uh, for every lesson we have pull request yeah uh, sometimes it's bunch of lessons like example here we have two lessons that um, have one pull request and uh, you can see additional links like example neomorphic elements code pen yeah where my design uh was stolen yeah and during coding sessions i gonna to use uh css styles and the templates that we have right over here so let's move to the repo and in the repo we have one component button yeah it it, it it's not so impressive but button component it uh, actually uh, prepared whole infrastructure of our project we have this component we have test cases yeah we uh, we've already installed jest and installed everything that we need yeah like tamization or stuff like this also we have storybook yeah with with very advanced uh, configuration we have uh, this example with interactions plugin actually we installed uh, a11y yeah accessibility plugin and everything that we need during the development process you can find everything uh, in the repo yeah that i've that we've already seen so uh, see you on next video where we continue to develop our components library where we join all the pieces together yeah we're going to develop uh, components according with uh, our button component yeah it should be something like this and you can see uh styles yeah it's common styles common styles that we're gonna to use uh for our uh, design like example this box shadow it's kind of uh, very important stuff that make a shape for our neomorphic elements yeah it's kind of volume that uh, our shadows uh just add to our elements yeah and common transition yeah so we just according with this structure continue to move forward okay so and thank you see you next video let's continue to develop our components library and i want to make something quite simple for today and let's make tile component as far as i remember functional react component is just a function that we can mark by special type let's import this type so we have this functional component type and we can mark our tile as functional component so then we can use props in this function and like example let's take children you can see that functional component by default it has one prop children let's take a look under the hood of this uh, type okay type fc it's kind of ls to function component we receive our um, props then we provide it to the function component and you can see that function component it's kind of function yeah right over here and uh, props marked as props with children and we provide these props then we mix together our props with non-required field children that mark as react node 
So it means by default, every uh, React functional component, it has children. I think that we need to add one more prop. Let's add uh, type uh, prop, props, and provide here, like example, um, header. Yeah, let's uh, mark it as uh, string. Yeah. Uh, and then we need to provide this type to the generic of functional component. It means that right now we have header and children props that we can render as return value. We, of course, return JSX and then wrap header and children uh, by some uh, JSX um, elements yeah, or components that we gonna to create. Let's create styled component and I want to make just some section yeah that includes header and children that we want to render. So I just uh, call styled dot section it means that I uh, I'm going to create this section component and then we have this section that we can uh, call right over here yeah and then we can provide header and children. Let's provide some uh, header, yeah. By example, let's make a header of second level, yeah. And then put here our header prop. So, and then let's render just children below. Yeah, so looks like we've done our component tile. Let's make story for this component. By the same way as we uh, did it for button, Let's just import store component story object, component meta, then import our component tile. So then we should export default uh, description in, in prop title and component that we will use. So uh, then we export our, uh, not of course primary button, let's uh, call it uh, tile or some basic, uh, uh, tile yeah, basic tile uh, that's uh, just our basic tile uh, rendering and we need to provide arguments that we need and we have header prop that uh, just a string and children that just uh, a yeah, you know, bunch of text yeah so looks like we've done basic stuff let's check how it looks okay and we have this content and tile yeah Okay, so when we change our uh, you know background, we have no any <laughs> changes. Yeah, for the dark mode, we have this dark uh, font. For the light uh, uh, background, we have this dark font too. So we need to make uh, by the same way. We need to make some neomorphic style for this uh, kind of tile. Yeah, and uh, to make this things uh, works fine when we change background like example when we change to the dark background should be light font uh, color yeah so let's do this okay for the button as far as I remember we have this box shadow yeah and I've done it as uh, common style that we can implement per tile too so we can just uh, take this style yeah, uh, by the same way, but we need only box shadow and we need to put the same box shadow for the tile component. So, and let's take a look to the browser. Okay, and we have uh, this style, yeah. Okay, it looks uh, much more better, uh, but we have no any mm, kind of, mm, you know, curve. Yeah, we have this... Uh, angle yeah we don't need this angle we need to make some curved angle yeah some uh round shape yeah instead this uh angle stuff so let's do this and for these purposes we have border radius radius right over here in the button so we can make it as common style too so and right now we have common border radius that we can import for button yeah and i can put it right over here yeah just interpolate this this as code 
Okay, so and by the same way, let's make it for tile, uh, for the tile component. So, but we need, of course, uh, import this uh, border radius too. Okay, and this kind of works fine for our tile component, and by the same way for the but for bunch of our buttons, yeah. And it looks like universal style, yeah. And probably we need to make it by the same way for every component. So uh, when we uh, change our background, yeah, we have this trouble with uh, color of fonts, yeah. We need to change it dynamically based on the preferred uh, settings uh, for the user. So and here we go. We just uh, take a uh, theme and return a uh, theme uh, font regular. Probably we can uh, make it some, by some universal style, yeah, like border radius. But we'll see, we'll see. If we need this kind of universal style, uh, we'll make it, yeah, we will make it easily. So, by the same way, let's add padding. Yeah, it's just padding for the content. We don't need to make it as close uh, to the, uh, you know, to the border. Yeah, as we did. So let's make it a little bit uh, more deeper in the content. I mean, for the content area, make some, uh, you know, area. Yeah, empty area between border and content. So and add uh, dynamic background. Now let's check how it looks and here we go yeah let's just uh switch between uh dark and light mode yeah we have this component it looks very cool yeah it's now more freezing we have this shadow that makes some volume for our component and when we switch uh between uh between uh this kind of teams yeah we have different uh fonts yeah and different fonts color Let's take a look to the accessibility tab. Okay, and for the dark mode, uh, we have four past cases, but for the light mode, we have one violation. Element must have sufficient color contrast. Yeah, we have not enough contrast between background and our font color. So when we take font color based on this theme font regular, and we can see that for the dark mode, we have uh, this kind of uh, font color and for the regular we have this uh, dark gray color let's make it a little bit more darker like example let's use this shadow one color okay so then I just need to replace this color and let's replace for the warning too just to make it uh, by some universal style so let's check it in the browser right now. We shouldn't shouldn't have this error anymore. Okay, so let's switch to the light mode. Okay, and everything uh, has passed. Yeah, we have four uh, past uh, accessibility cases. Yeah, so great, looks great. Let's add uh, some uh, interactions uh, and probably uh, let's just detect that we've uh, been uh, rendering our header. Okay, and it should be something like we expect, yeah. And of course we need to import expect from storybook just and we have this screen, yeah. And we expect that on this on the screen um get element yeah uh, uh, get element by role and we need to find our header yeah heading so and uh, it should be in the document yeah so to be in the document yeah matcha should have uh, should has it, it should have passed yeah and so and we expect that on the screen we have this uh heading and it should be in the document okay let's check uh, on the interaction tab that right now we have uh, this screen get by roll heading to be in the document uh test case it actually works fine yeah and when we switch to the dark mode it works fine yeah everything looks cool so accessibility uh fully satisfied so looks like we've done it yeah so great we have one more component 
Okay, so see you. Before we move forward to the next component, let's add one more task. We need to create test cases for our tile component. And I just want to check render, yeah, and we provide to the tile uh, some header and then uh, content uh, as children, yeah, and then we just generate a snapshot and you can see that there is a result, yeah, it's a header and uh, you can see right over here our content. So uh, we can run our test cases just to use npm test. And then you can see that we failed one snapshot because we've been changed our button component. We put here border radius and it's just uh, regenerate our CSS classes and we need to update our snapshots. To make these things works, we need uh, to make these things work, we need to add npm test dash dash then uh, space and dash uh, u just to update our test. Uh, yeah, you can see we just update our snapshots by this uh, additional option in the CLI tool. And right now we have two uh, past test cases. Let's make an uh, icon component. And I wanted to present you React SVG icons project. Where you can find uh, lots of uh, great icons. You can uh, see that it includes uh, all of the probably most popular uh, libraries so and it's very easy you just need can search icon that you want and then copy this kind of component that includes svg version of the icon so and then you can easily can import this uh, kind of component and use it as usual jessix and provide a bunch of uh, props that you want to apply to this component like example class name or width height or stuff like this or just uh, provide style uh, immediately to the uh, some wrapper of the icon component that uh, this component i mean icon gonna to extend so how can we implement this approach onto our project by the same way as described in the documentation, I create uh, a bunch of uh, components, yeah, icon components, like example, user, moon, sun, home, settings, and then I export everything uh, as an object, yeah, as, as, as an object, and then uh, we move to the step number two. We just import icons from icons. And then we can read uh, what kind of keys do we have for our icons. And for these purposes, we have this pattern type of icons. And then we take key of uh, this type. And we have this bunch of um, possible icons that we can apply. I want to remind you what we're going to receive per every icon. We have this bunch of props that mark as React SVG props. Uh, for SVG element. It means that when we uh, want to make our props for the icon, for proper that going to use these icons, we just use props and we combine together uh, React SVG props with props that we need in our component that going to call a particular icon. And we need name and size, yeah? We just select uh, a particular icon and size for the icon that we want wanted to render. And uh, then bunch of SVG props that we, of course, can add to our icon. So here we go. Uh, we just mark our icon as functional component with type props that we've created before. And right now we have name and size that we by default initialize to 2 RAM and the rest of the props uh, that can be applicable to our particular icon. We select from icons, yeah, we have this bunch of icons. We select uh, icon that we um, use by name and then we make sizes. Uh, it's kind of width and height. Okay, so then we can apply these uh, props to our component icon. 
Okay, and here we go. We just put to the icon our sizes. Yeah, it's width and height and the rest of the props. Yeah. Okay, so it means that we uh, already we've already done yeah our icon component, but probably we have one small problem. So and then I just need to add one more storybook, yeah, and uh, provide here um, our usual story. Yeah, it's just icon. We mark it as content icon. Uh, provide here a component icon, and make template based on component story. Yeah. So uh, basically, we wanted to render home uh, icon. So. You can see our icon now and when i change our uh, background you can see that we have no any changes in the color yeah and we of course we can see this icon but i wanted to make it by the same uh by the same color as a font yeah so it means that we need to add dynamic themes and to make it we need to have of course our um styled component temps um, API. So we need to wrap our icon by some styled component to make these things work. Let's import styled and then I want to make something like this. We need to have our uh, wrapper yeah and let's make one more type wrapper props and then we uh, provide here size and uh, to the props we compare uh, we just uh, merge together our name and wrapper props and react svg props so then we can put this type to our styled component and we have this wrapper yeah we change color based on theme and uh, width and height based on prop size so and then we have uh, this uh, prop size yeah and i render it uh, to our icon component and provide here our prop size so it means that right now we have dynamic size and dynamic font color so let's uh, check in the storybook and right now we have this uh, behavior yeah on the uh, dark background we have this light icon and on the light background we have this dark icon from the accessibility everything works fine so we have controls uh, where we can change our uh, you know icons based on our our selection yeah and we can set uh, size yeah like example 10 ram or 5 ram or 3 ram without any problems so right now we have component icon and uh, when we need some new icon, like example, we just add new icon, then export it uh, right over here, and our icon component just automatically uh, detect uh, this type. Yeah, we have one more available icon in this case, and then we just render it. So, one more tab in the storybook that can be very helpful. It's uh, you have we have canvas and we have docs yeah and here in the docs we can provide documentation for our component yeah and like this you can see that uh right now we can see the code what we need to uh write to make this icon uh in this example we have icon sun and size 3 ram and then uh we have uh particular props and description of these props yeah so it means that we can make documentation and specification for our components library let's do this and we can make it just uh, <laughs> we just need to provide uh, comments yeah to every uh, prop that we need in the type definition and then we can see that these uh, comments uh, already uh, have yeah already in the documentation of our component yeah we have this icon name and width and height yeah let's make the same uh, description per every component and here we go right now I just put comment to the prop for tile and uh, three more comments in the props of uh, the button. So let's take a look how it works and we have uh, in the icon we have this icon name yeah width and height description 
and in the button you have text in the button button color uh tem and s it's basic it's basic props for our stylet and on click handler so you can see different version of this uh, button yeah and uh, different props that we need to provide to make this kind of button yeah and that's our uh, icon description and our tile so right now probably we reviewed most of the functionality of storybook so it's great job that we've done okay see you in the next video bye Let's review my small refactoring and uh, I want to start from the icon component. Uh, right now I have this index.ts file that uh, just uh, like separation of export uh, directive from our common code uh, for the component. Yeah, like example, right now I have this icon uh, file that just um, code for our component and this definition export in index.ts file. It's very important to split these things, not to mix up it together, uh, to make export uh, more clearer than it uh, was when we make index file and put every kind of code that we want. Yeah. So uh, also uh, we have this index uh, .test .t6. It's very important to make test cases per every component, even if this some fragment comparison yeah it's very important to make some confidence interval uh based on our uh test cases metrics and stuff like this okay it's just quite simple test case we render icon with uh some icon moon yeah and then uh, we compare fragment to be sure that our rendering works as we expected so Next part of our refactoring, I have this index export uh, definition per every component for the tile and for the button we have this index export uh, directive. And I have one old habit uh, from the React legacy uh, because of JSX transformation. And um, uh, previously we should import uh, react from react uh, per every file before react version 17 it should be um, per every file yeah because of this react create element uh, api yeah and we uh, should uh, just put this directive per every file if we have react uh, before react version 17 right now we have very important change yeah this uh, kind of new uh, JSX runtime in Babel and we don't need this import notation anymore because it's automatically uh, includes uh, per every file uh, like this yeah import JSX from React JSX runtime and then uh, we have this variable that already included per every file so we don't need this React because of changes in JSX transformation so uh, in our case we need to find uh, places with import react directive and right now I've already done it yeah we have this uh, react import react from react in test utils and also in test uh, button and uh, for for the button.tsx I have one important change yeah and button dot t6 it's kind of mm, consist of this button like low level component that provides uh for us um a api to create button yeah then you need to provide just color per every uh possible scenario like example primary button secondary warning and stuff like this yeah and i make um yeah i've done this kind of additional components primary button secondary button danger button and warning button that uh built uh uh on the top of this low level api i just have this color property that i provide per every uh, rendering scenario yeah uh and right now i have 
primary button, secondary button, danger button and warning button that we're going to use uh, during the development process. It can be a little bit more easier instead of uh, this prop color. Yeah. So I want to remind you about our repo courses box. Yeah. Just press uh, the star button, make a fork, uh, feel free to change or use this code in uh, your project. Yeah, you can see that per every lesson we have pull request and you can look to the pull request for this lesson. Yeah, I have this real time merge. Yeah. And right now in the courses box, you can see that we have this pull request for the refactor. Okay, so see you on next video. Bye. Let's create checkbox component. And for the checkbox, we have the same bunch of files that we need. It's test cases, stories, and component. And index file just export everything that we need. Let's take a look to this uh, basic template. We have a checkbox, it's functional component. And we have one prop on change. Yeah, this prop on change we provide to this input element. And when we change status of input from selected to non selected, we have this handler that we can use to handle this uh, event. And we have two labels uh, wrapper and visible part. Wrapper just wrap everything, and visible part uh, it keep it keeps only this checkbox uh, mark. Yeah. So uh, based on this bunch of elements we and components, we just create our own styles for the checkbox. Let's take a look to the browser side and you can see that here is just default rendering of the checkbox and here we have a label, it's just a check mark, yeah, and nothing more. Okay, let's uh, switch back to the ID and right now I want to add a bunch of styles that we need. First of all, I don't want this default rendering for our input element. Yeah, we just uh, switch it to display none. So this end symbol, it means that uh, we uh, based on the style uh, class. Yeah, wanted to find this input. Yeah, it's kind of reference to our component uh, class that we create uh, when we call this style label. Yeah, and you can see the same pattern on the element here. Here, here we have wrapper and input just inside this wrapper. So we just switch. Uh, we just uh, make display none for our input. So then let's provide this bunch of styles to our visible part. First of all, it should be in line block yeah, to manipulate width and height. So secondary, we uh, switch this user select to none to prevent any attempts from the user side to select something from this component. Cursor pointer to make uh, a notion for the user that it's something interactive that you could click like example. Uh, text align center and border radius width and height. So then by default, I don't want to have this check mark. Yeah, I want to uh, make it visible only when we uh, switch uh, for the input uh, status to select it. Yeah, so by default, we just make fully transparent text color. So then we have a dynamic background based on user preference. Yeah, this background that we select from theme components background. As far as I remember, we have this box shadow. It's kind of common styles that we uh, we've done for all of our components. And right now I want to add to the visible part this box shadow. And this box shadow is just play of shadows to make this kind of neomorphism style to our component. So let's take a look to the browser. And right now it's look very cool. Yeah, we have this neomorphic uh, box. Yeah. Yeah, and right now we need to add this behavior uh, for the checkbox. Yeah, we need to uh, make this check mark visible when we select, um, when we click to our element, we should make it as selected. Yeah, and then uh, we just should um, open this check mark. So 
And right now we have no any bindings between this input and this visible path label. Yeah. To make this uh, binding, we need to add ID to our input. And for the visible part, we have HTML4 prop uh, that just bind together this input and visible part. But the question is, how can we make uh, some universal, I mean, unique uh, ID generator that should be the same for one uh, rendering full rendering cycle i mean between mount and unmount for this component and we have use ref that actually very very useful it's just object uh, uh like generic container whose current property is mutable and can hold any value similar to an instance property or class yeah it's kind of universal style that you can use to create something stable like a uh, mark or some value that uh, should be the same uh, per one uh, full life cycle of our component between uh, mount and unmount so let's import this use ref and then we can generate our unique identifier yeah and use ref uh, to the use ref we just provide this kind of interpolated string with prefix and then mass random to string uh, we just convert it to base 16 uh, digit system and then uh, we slice uh, our string from second symbol to the end of our string okay so here we have this our field id and then i'm going to provide this field id to our input and to our visible path label this pattern just bind together input and this label yeah when when i'm going to click to this uh, label visible part i just immediately toggle uh, a status for our input from selected to non-selected and vice versa okay so last but not least let's make our styles to the checked mark yeah and for these purposes i wanted to call this pseudo checked uh, selector yeah and when we uh, switch to the checked status i want to find nearest uh, neighbor's label label and then for this label we just switch our box shadow to um, the same bunch of shadows but we are gonna to add this uh, inset property as far as I remember for the box shadow we have this sort uh, argument that just set up inset yeah in case when we provide here true we just add this inset string per every <laughs> yeah per every um, position for the box shadow yeah so right now uh, we have just this uh, behavior for the box shadow and uh, then we just switch our uh, color from the full transparent text color to some regular font. So let's take a look to the browser. Yeah, just open storybook and then let's click to our yeah to our uh, checkbox and you can see that everything works fine except uh, this size. Yeah, the size of this checkbox mark. Okay, let's fix it. And it's probably quite simple. Let's just uh, make font size 1.8 RAM and probably everything should work fine now. Let's switch back to the browser and when I click to the checkbox, let's just update page. Yeah. When I click to the checkbox, you can see this checkbox mark. Okay, so but I want to add a little bit more interaction with the user yeah and when you uh make over i want to add uh, the same uh pattern yeah just let's add this box shadow inset to make a little bit more interactive way to uh communicate with user okay so so we have this visible part and we have this hover behavior yeah that we can use uh, hover pseudo just gonna to change this box shadow yeah and add this inset property so uh, probably we can check it now okay so and we have this behavior yeah when we 
when we uh, hover to the element we have this play of shadows then when we click we just uh, set up this inset property and it looks like active yeah like selected uh, checkbox and when we uh, yeah unselect we have this default uh, neomorphism style for our checkbox and let's add transition yeah just to make it a little bit uh, more uh, slower so uh let's add transition after this uh, box shadow yeah and it just will be just some uh, s smooth transformation between every style yeah it, it it should be uh very cool let's check in the browser and right now when we uh click and sell make some uh uh, selection yeah when we click to the checkbox and switch status to the selected you can see this smooth transformation between colors yeah so next let's add interactions to our storybook okay and here we go we just uh find by text uh yeah and we have this check mark as unique text that we can use to our selection on the screen and then we call user event click to this uh check mark so then we expect that on change uh, property to have been called yeah so let's take a look to the browser and you can see in the interactions tab right now that we have two past cases yeah we just uh click to the um, element with the text uh, like check mark yeah and we expect that action on change to have been called called everything works fine and last but not least let's move to the test cases for our checkbox and of course we just gonna to check render behavior and then by the same way we just render our checkbox and uh, uh, then we find this uh, element by check mark and then click to this element yeah and we expect that our own change handler to have been called so let's run our test cases and we'll see the result of our hard work okay and we have one failed test case what are the reason yeah we have this label and this input yeah and this input every time we have unique yeah generation because of this mass random yeah and we need to make it by universal style we don't need this randomness anymore how can we make it in our test case okay we have pattern like this we can call just spy on then we uh, for the mask just gonna to spy for this random uh, method and then we mock return value for this random just put some uh, predictable value that going to be absolutely the same per every test uh, run so let's run npm test and uh, you can see that everything works fine yeah right now we have test cases we have these stories and we have these interactions and our component checkbox works fine yeah it, it's it's very cool so see you in the next video bye let's create a switch component and for the switch component we have absolutely the same structure as for the checkbox we have this wrapper um, that just uh, style it label and this visible part that just style it label too we wrap everything by this wrapper and uh, we bind together visible part and input by id that we're going to generate right over here yeah uh, just use ref hook like in the checkbox component so but i don't want to duplicate this code i have i wanted to have some universal uh style to generate our identity so how can i make it and i want to remind you about custom uh, react hooks and uh, a custom hook is a, fun a javascript function whose name starts with use and that may call other hooks yeah it's kind of pattern that you can use to make a uh, logic that you can share between different components yeah and uh, uh, this kind of pattern that i want to apply for our solution and we'll make use id hook and for the use id we just need to generate uh, 
uni unique ID that we just return for the component. Okay, so and it's quite simple. We just uh, can call uh, different React hooks, and in this example, we just uh, call use ref and then provide to the use ref this uh, unique string generator, and then we return current value. So I can mark uh, from the, uh, for the return definition for this hook uh, that we gonna to return just a string. So then we can, uh, of course we can and we should uh, to create some test cases. And we need to install testing library React Hooks. It's a library uh, that can help you to test React Hooks. And uh, here we go. We just call render hook and provide here our use ID. And then in the result, we have field current that we can compare with everything that we want and that we need. And in our example, we just call result current and uh, then use uh, too much uh, matcher. Yeah, we provide here regexp uh, that gonna to detect words and digits and here we should have 13 symbols that could be uh, uh, just uh, signs, I mean, of course, uh, letters and digits. Okay, so, and for the second test case, we just call render hook twice and then we expect that our result one current not to be result two current. Yeah, it's just a uniqueness uh, per every render of this hook. And when I don't want to run all of my test cases, I can add a special configs for my ED and here we have run and debug and for these purposes we need to create a launch JSON file. So I'm going to use my um, config that I've already done. Yeah, you can uh, look at my launch JSON on the GitHub GIST. I just attach it uh, under this video. Yeah, link to this launch JSON. So um, I can just, um, I know, briefly introduce you to this launch JSON structure. Yeah. We have different configurations. Here we have name for the configuration and then bunch of arguments that we want to add to this program that we are going to call uh, when we press to this button play yeah, for some particular configuration uh, that we have right over here. Yeah, and um, you can see that uh, this kind of options uh, verbos, yeah, it's um, uh, verbos style of output when we run this kind of program. We have this uh, flag watch all, that means when we run our test cases, we just gonna to observe any changes in file system and when file system uh, detects some changes, we just rerun our test cases at all. And we have this just run current file, it means that we just call only one file that uh, we want to uh, test right now and just watch current file it means that we run our uh, file and watch and I mean observe any changes per this particular file so uh, we have these options and I want to uh, just um, watch current file yeah or run current file and then when I click the display button you can see the result of uh, run uh, use id.test.ts and we have two pass test cases. So, and then I just uh, import our use id from components hooks use id and then I'm going to call this use id right over here in the line 45. Yeah, and our field id uh, should be generated uh, by the same way. Yeah, but actually I just change it I've uh, of course um, I've been changing it this behavior because we have right now uh, you can look to the switch yeah we have this prefix yeah and when I uh, when I did this use ID, we have no this prefix anymore. We just generate this unique uh, string and this is it. Yeah. So let's check uh, our checkbox. Uh, for these purposes, let's just uh, watch uh, current checkbox test cases.
Okay, and you can see that here we have one failed test case and of course it's about our prefix yeah we need to update our snapshot yeah and you can see uh options yeah we can press u to update failing snapshots okay let's press u and you can see that right now we have two past past test cases Okay, and one more important step, we should export checkbox from checkbox in the index uh, file. Yeah, I just actually, I've lost it uh, on my previous uh, coding session. Yeah, and right now I have this fix. So, by the same way, we just call this use ID for the switch. And we right now have this uh, universal style to generate our field ID. You can see our changes now. Here we have checkbox uh, index file in the components checkbox. Uh, we we updated snapshot and we have one more uh, hook use ID yeah, in components hooks. But also we have this VS Code launch JSON changes. Okay, and don't wanted to track it and push it to my uh, Git repo. So let's just add it to the Git ignore. Yeah, and of course I want to make commit with this Git ignore file. And I don't want to make this video longer than 10 minutes, so let's stop uh, here. And on the next video, we're going to proceed to working on with the switch component. So, see you. Let's create switch component. And by the same way as for the checkbox, we need to add this uh, type props. And we need to provide these props to the functional component. And of course, we need to import change event right over here. Okay, and right now we have uh, this uh, on change uh, prop that we can provide to the input checkbox handler. Okay, and let's create storybook for the switch component. We just created by the same way as for the checkbox. Uh, in the controls, we have this bunch of storybooks, sto switch, yeah, and then basic switch. Let's take a look to the browser. Okay, here we go. There is our switch, and when we click, we have this action, yeah, uh, on change. Okay, everything looks as we expected. Yeah, it's just basic checkbox that we gonna to make a little bit more <laughs> cooler. Yeah, instead of this vanilla uh, checkbox uh, HTML input. Then let's apply this bunch of basic styles. Yeah, cursor pointer to notify user that this is just an interactive element with height and border radius uh, background uh, based on the theme uh, box shadow yeah uh, because we want of course this uh, neomorphic style for this component too and transition so and for the wrapper of course we don't want to have this input anymore yeah just let's switch it to display none and one more important style is display flex, yeah, because we want to apply flex uh, properties for this elements. Okay, so let's take a look to the browser and you can see that it looks uh, like we wanted, yeah, it's kind of switch, yeah, and for this switch component, we need to add some toggler, yeah, that's going to uh, notify uh, status uh, of this switch. So. And for the toggler, we have this after prop, uh, pseudo, yeah, we just add uh, empty, uh, yeah, just empty string for the content. Then we make margin left uh, 0.5 RAM, width and height uh, 2.1 RAM, border radius 50% and background uh, uh, as non-active component from the team. Okay, so uh, right now we have this after and uh, we have this display flex. We want to uh, just align everything by the center. So let's make a flex direction row, justify content by the flex start and align items by the center. So let's take a look to the storybook. Again, here we go. Right now it looks very cool. Yeah, it's half of job that we've done. Yeah, so right now we need to make this transition yeah between non-active to the active 
again by the same way as we've done for the checkbox we need to uh, add this checked pseudo to the input and then find nearest label change background to components primary and uh, to apply for the after uh, margin left property to move this socal to the right uh, side of this item and switch background to the components active okay so let's take a look to the uh, storybook and right now you can see that it works fine yeah everything works as we expected but without this smooth transition yeah it's just immediate switch between one style to another one so let's uh, probably move this transition to the auto pseudo probably right over here let's take a look to the browser now and right now we have this smooth transformation and changes of styles yeah okay everything works as we expected also when we change background to the light everything works fine yeah so uh, accessibility looks cool yeah in the dark and uh, in the light mode yeah and for the next step let's add data test id this uh, test id switch visible path and then to the switch stories we just add these interactions yeah user band click to get by test id switch visible path and then we expect that arguments on change to have been called so let's take a look to the storybook Okay, just reload the page and you can see that in the interaction stop we, uh, yeah, everything works fine. Yeah, we just uh, find this switch visible part and uh, then we expect that our on change handler to have been called. Yeah, everything works cool. Actions works fine. Uh, so accessibility looks cool. And last but not least, let's add test cases okay here we go we just import our switch then make a render check and that our on change callback works fine and you can see that two test cases has passed then let's export switch from switch in the index.ts file and final stroke let's add this on uh, change callback uh, description to our props uh, for the checkbox and for the switch just to add this information to the documentation uh, on the storybook side let's take a look to our storybook finally here yeah? and we have this on change callback description for the props name we have this documentation you can look to the code that you need to create uh for for this component yeah this description and um, you can look to the uh, checkbox yeah by the same way we have this description okay looks like we've done it we have this interactions accessibility and test cases for our component so see you Let's make a logo component based on font monotone. Yeah, you can look to the example. Yeah, it looks very cool. We just import it to our project and make logo with this font. Yeah. So to import it to our project, we need to add to the font.google APIs one more font. Yeah, we previously we have. Uh, We've just added this font poppins and right now we need to add one more font monotone. So for the logo, uh, we have this quite simple template. Yeah, we have one prop size right over here and we just use this font family monotone. Yeah. And for the storybook, it's quite simple. We just uh, put it to the content uh, group, uh, our logo and uh, then we have this interaction yeah we want to find by role our banner and check that it this banner in the document yeah and you can look again to the stylet we just make this header component yeah so for the next step let's make just dynamic font size yeah based on size prop and right now let's take a look to the browser uh okay and here we go yeah 
there are courses box logo yeah uh, and we can change size font size yeah we just make it uh, uh bigger yeah and we can switch this background and you can see that we have no any changes because we have no any font uh, color implementation in our themes let's take a look how we can do this okay so but before let's consider this neon glow effect yeah you can see that it's of course our monotone font yeah and you can uh, see how it looks yeah it's very cool and this effect uh, based on font color and on the text shadow yeah we have this bench text uh, shadow that makes this things looks like uh, neon uh, glow yeah so and uh, you can see to the how it works in the css text shadow property uh, text shadow it's basically horizontal shadow as first parameter and as uh, for the second we have vertical shadow and uh, third one it can be uh just color yeah of this sh shadow or we can add a blur effect yeah so uh vertical shadow uh i mean horizontal shadow vertical shadow then blur and color for our shadow and we can add as many shadows as we want yeah here we have a bunch of uh text shadows yeah uh, and these shadows can overlap yeah without any problems Okay, so let's implement this style in our logo. Let's add a bunch of colors to the font. Uh, logo color, uh, logo shadow 1 and logo shadow 2. And by the same way to the font in light mode. Yeah, a logo, logo shadow 1 and logo shadow 2. And then let's implement our styles. Yeah, and we just... Uh, uh, create a uh, font color yeah based on uh, user preference and text shadow yeah we have this uh, this uh, five text shadow uh, first one it's logo shadow based on logo shadow one color and for the next we have this logo shadow two yeah and we just implement it like this so uh, let's check in the browser how it looks and you can see the result now yeah it looks uh, very interesting in the dark mode and for the light mode too okay but when we put here a uh, size like this yeah we have no any scaling for our uh, this glow neon glow effect yeah for this um, text shadow we need to make it uh, bigger based on this size preference how can we do this and to make these shadows proportionally we can use our size and it's quite simple equation yeah size times so coefficient it uh, equals uh, this value so then when we uh, divide our value to the size we should have our coefficient and 0 0.3 divide by 3 it's uh, 0 0.1 like example so based on this uh, <laughs> quite simple equation let's calculate our coefficients and here we go just uh, instead of our values yeah hard coded uh, to uh, to the string we just uh, create this calculation based on size yeah we just calculate these coefficients and then multiply it by size and we have our values that dynamically are uh, gonna to uh, recalculates based on this size uh, property let's take a look to the browser and here we go yeah when we just change our size everything looks absolutely the same yeah we just rescale size uh, of our font and then rescale this shadow yeah and you can uh, see that we have this dark and light mode everything looks as we expected yeah our interactions works fine okay let's check accessibility and we have five past cases for the uh, dark mode and for the light mode everything looks cool then let's add this uh, comment yeah that we uh, that we always make for the documentation in the storybook yeah and let's add test case yeah it's quite simple we just need to uh, detect yeah so that 
I just need to drop this redundant imports. Yeah, we just need to check that we render by default our courses box um, as we expected. Yeah, and then that we render with font size 10 our courses box 2. When we run our test cases, it works stable. Yeah, we have these snapshots. Okay, so looks like we've done our logo component. Yeah, and everything looks cool. So, thank you. Let's create icon button component. And basically, we're going to start from this uh, template. Yeah, and let's add a bunch of uh, basic styles for the button. Let's apply display flex, justify content center, align item center, and cursor pointer just to align everything by the center and make this element uh, interactive. Yeah, we just signal by this pointer cursor for the user. Then let's provide width, height, and border radius. And of course, box shadow and transition that we already used yeah, a lot uh, in our project. And we just provide here transition, then uh, box shadow uh, to make this neomorphic style. Uh, active, we just add inset yeah, for the pseudo active. And for the hover, we uh, change opacity a little bit to make this even more interactive. We need to put here icon uh, component with all of the necessary props to the icon. And how can we do this? We need to resolve types. And in the icon, we have this type props that we need to export. So then in the index file, we need to export type uh, props yeah? from the icon. Yeah. So then we can use it in icon button. Yeah, we can import icon and icon props. And then we need to mix up together these props. Yeah, uh, that uh, gonna to just a bunch of uh, props that we provide to the icon. Here we have on click and then we can make rest of the props and provide it to the icon component. Yeah. So right now we just uh, take on click and put it to the button and then for the rest of the props we provide it to the icon component. But probably in this case we have small trouble trouble with size. Yeah, For the icon we have this size that we uh, mark as string. Yeah, We have this uh, wrapper props size as string. And uh, we just uh, set up it as to RAM by default. Let's make it as number, yeah, and then and then install it by default to value two. Let's add uh, to the size uh, our uh, yeah me me measure value yeah in RAM. So and then provide uh, our to our width and height this size in RAM. By the same way, let's uh, just convert our digit to size in RAM and install it to sizes right over here. We can look to the browser and just uh, to make sure that everything works fine, let's install, like example, 10 RAM and then inspect our element. And uh, you can see that uh, okay, here we have size 10 RAM. Yeah, everything looks cool. Then we need to update our snapshot. Just press U to make this. And for the next step, yeah, but before to make this update, we need first of all, of course, uh, run current file in watch mode. Yeah, and then after run, we can update snapshot using this, uh, you can see, uh, menu, yeah, what we can do and what button we should press, yeah. But right now uh, we have past test cases, everything looks cool. We won't update any snapshot right now. So let's make one more type button props and put it to the styled button, yeah. And right now we should provide here size based on our prop size. So we can put right over here uh, something like this props dot size. Yeah, but we need to add our um, yeah RAM value to make this things works as we expected. Yeah, something like this. We provide here size in RAM 
and then for the width and high we can easily convert it uh, from these fixed values to some um, value based on this prop okay here we go we just uh, use the same pattern yeah we just uh, set up width and height to size yeah okay so and right now let's check our storybook and let's check our icon button yeah so uh probably it wasn't a good idea to put the uh, size directly yeah we need to scale it a little bit i mean uh we can multiply uh size right, right over here by two like example yeah okay and of course we know that size it uh could be undefined so let's uh install some default value like example two yeah and right now uh based on props size yeah we just um uh, just scale this size to some uh, value that uh, should be satisfied that should satisfy our wishes yeah so let's switch to the browser and we can see that it looks much more better yeah our uh, icon button right now looks cool yeah we can switch between dark and light mode it still uh, looks cool let's switch to the interactions and uh, we uh, check that we can find our button um, by role yeah and then we expect that our callback to have been called okay for the actions everything looks cool for the accessibility let's just reload our page okay and right now we have one more trouble from the accessibility side yeah uh so we um uh, can check more info yeah about this trouble and you can see that button uh, name has five markup buttons that pass that criteria yeah we should provide id or area label or probably title yeah let's provide uh title yeah and uh, probably it could be very easy yeah for the title we have props name yeah because we in the props we have name for the icon that we should use uh, in this button so let's install a title as props dot name and let's check our accessibility again and here we go yeah we have three past yes three past test cases and when we switch to the light mode everything still looks cool yeah actions works fine interactions it has passed yeah and we can change uh, yeah this icon inside this button and set up some size like example 10 yeah and we uh have 10 RAM for this icon and 2 x2 uh, size for the button itself yeah so and we can switch between light and dark without any problem so looks like we've done it yeah but we need to add test cases and for the test cases you already have a lots of example yeah and i just wanted to remind you what we should do we should uh, generate a snapshot then uh, match our snapshot just check uh, render and then on click callback we want to know that our callback on click works fine so let's run our test case and everything looks cool yeah we generate snapshot okay so let's uh, run uh, all test scenarios in our project yeah just run npm test okay and we have uh, eight past test suits uh, 14 tests so looks like we've done it so thank you let's create an input component and for the input i have this basic template yeah we have um type props that um includes label type string placeholder type script and on change that change event handler based on html input element so and then we take this label and put it uh inside our label then I put line break and our styled input and our styled input it's styled uh, dot input component and we have label yeah label is just styled label 
And let's consider our story. Yeah, we just have uh, controls input uh, compo for the component input, arguments, it's placeholder and label, and then our uh, primary input. We just provide here interaction that uh, just check uh, that screen uh, get by roll text boxes on the screen, and then we type uh stream yeah it, it's just uh one two three five six symbols yeah and it means that per every symbol we just have different uh calls of on change callback yeah and we can check that we expect that arguments on change to have been called six times so let's right now uh just check how it looks in the browser and you can see the result yeah, it's just basic input with this label name yeah and we have these interactions yeah we check that user event type works fine and we expect that our on changed have been called six times so let's add a bunch of styles that just create this neomorphic style and for the label first of all it's quite simple we just apply font color regular and font size size one ram and padding left 1.4 ram and basically for the styled input we unset all styles and then set up width and height uh, border radius font size absolutely the same um, yeah font size 1.4 ram and padding left absolutely the same as for the label to make the same uh, uh, to make the same padding yeah to make the same uh, displacement yeah uh, the same offset for um, content in the input and for the label so and then let's apply box shadow yeah and by default uh, we have this um, uh, flag uh, true yeah for I, I just want to remind you that we have this inset property yeah and for the input we have by default inset um, shadow yeah and when we focus uh, to this input we just switch off this inset property yeah to make it uh, like by inverse neomorphic logic style so let's check how it looks yeah we have this input then we put here some uh, some strings yeah it works fine yeah and we have this inset uh, property by default and we switch off this inset when we put focus to this input we can check that when we tap something like sample test we have this on change call per every uh, symbol that we tap in the input so and based our uh, theme yeah preference we just change immediately this style yeah for the label and for the placeholder yeah when we switch our background so and for the placeholder let's add one more uh color yeah because uh, i just want to have a separated color for the placeholder in light and for the dark mode too so let's add uh here placeholder for the light yeah and we have this placeholder color for the dark and let's add this pseudo placeholder uh and provide here font color for the placeholder then let's add one more useful property let's call it uh feedback yeah when we uh, want to have some information uh like example this is required field we need to provide feedback for the user okay and let's add this feedback property uh that just wrap it to the label and add this feedback okay but by the same way let's generate id that bind together this input with this label we just import use id <coughs> components hooks use id and then we generate here field id and put it to the styled input as id prop and for the label we have html for prop oh, and right now we just bind together both of these props and then let's add this feedback argument to the storybook yeah just some basic string looks cool so let's check how it looks in the storybook and you can see now that we have this uh name and looks cool uh feedback yeah it's both just labels yeah when we click to these labels we provide focus to this input yeah and when we put some string we can see we can see how it looks yeah 
So, but for the feedback, I don't want to have just a string right over here. It should be something that can notify user that everything cool or everything is bad. Yeah, it's kind of colors or stuff like this. Let's create inside input component feedback. Yeah, and feedback it's kind of component that's just a span that can manipulate by color. And we have this flag is valid, yeah. And when we have valid font color, we just provide valid, yeah. And when it's invalid, provide invalid, yeah. And you can see how it looks in the theme, yeah. We have valid this green light, and for the invalid, this red light, yeah. And by the same way, for the light uh, mode, we have this green and red lights. Then we have these basic test cases. It's kind of a render check for valid and for the invalid mode. Yeah, we just provide flag is valid for the valid feedback and invalid for some troubles. Then we have this basic storybooks, and we create valid feedback story. Uh, yeah, then we just provide for the children looks good and is valid flag we set up to true. And for the interactions, we expect that uh, on the screen uh, we should have this uh, this string. Yeah, we should have uh, this component. And for the invalid feedback, it's absolutely the same logic, but we just want to find a component with different string. So let's check how it looks in the browser. And we have this feedback component, and it's quite simple. Yeah, just two uh, options. Yeah, one for the valid uh, invalid feedback, and one for the valid. And we can switch lights. Yeah, and uh, just check how it looks for different uh, backgrounds. And for the feedback, it shouldn't be just a string now. Uh, let's make it by React Child type yeah it means that our feedback it could be a react component as well so let's import our feedback component and then let's make two more uh, stories with valid feedback and with invalid feedback yeah we just provide feedback is valid true when everything looks good and is valid false when we uh, yeah when everything is bad and for the cases when we have a uh, React component <clears throat> as property, yeah, we should switch off our control, yeah, because uh, control right now, uh, currently, yeah, is not supporting these things. I mean, React components. So we just switch off it for the both of these cases. So when we have this basic case, when our input is just an input, yeah, when we have this feedback, it's just, a, it's just a string. Then we have valid feedback, yeah, invalid feedback, sorry, uh, when our field is required, yeah, and for the light mode, everything looks cool too. And we have this uh, valid feedback, yeah, when uh, everything looks good, yeah. So, and last but not least, we have input with this icon. So, and probably we need to do uh, the same option to provide an icon to the input component. Let's take a look to our icon component and we have this type available icons. Yeah, so we export this type and in the index.ts, probably we need to export it too to make, uh, by, to make a possibility to read uh, possible icons that we can provide to the input. So then we import icon and available icons and let's add to the type props uh, one more prop icon, yeah, that just uh, mark as available icons, yeah. So let's create styled icon component that just wrap our icon by styled. It means that we want to make an extension of our icon component. And let's consider our icon component again. Yeah, we have this wrapper uh, that just keep color and width and height. And then we provide the same property sizes, like example, to our icon. But probably we can, um, yeah, we just can exclude this wrapper and provide these styles directly to the selected icon. 
We can wrap our icons component by style and provide here colors that we want based on preferred team uh, from the user side. Yeah, just provide here regular color. You can see that only one reason why we have this wrapper it's because of this color. We just synchronized width and height for this wrapper with width and height for this icon. So it means that we don't need this wrapper anymore. So let's just move this wrapper props to the props. Then let's just drop this wrapper props type. Okay, and we don't need this wrapper anymore. Okay, and let's drop it from here. Now it looks much more better. Yeah, we have this icon that we can insert right over here for the input. So, but I don't want to make this video longer than 10 minutes. So let's just split it to two parts. Yeah, and okay, see you in the next video. Let's review what we have done on the previous video. And uh, we, uh, we've refactored our icon component. Uh, we just... Uh, uh, just drop redundant wrapper. Yeah, we have this bunch of props that we um, directly put to the icon uh, component. And in the input, we have this icon prop that uh, based on type available icons. So uh, right now we have this icon prop and we can ins in insert this icon component immediately after styled input. So and here we go. When we have this icon prop, we render this styled icon and provide name uh, of our icon to the name prop of styled icon. Okay, in styled icon, I want to remind you this just uh, yeah just extension of our basic icon, and then we can provide a bunch of styles that we need to this styled icon. Okay, and for the icon, let's make a display block. Then let's make this offset uh, using margin margin top. Yeah, we just uh, move our uh, styled icon uh, in place where we have this input. Yeah, padding left uh, 0 0.5 frame, uh, color based on theme font placeholder, and opacity 0 0.7. Then for the pseudo focus, let's add uh, this uh, additional style. Yeah, we just uh, find this uh, next nearest SVG and apply a, a color for the, based on theme font regular and make opacity equals one. Yeah, we just uh, drop all opacity from this icon. So let's take a look uh, to the browser. Okay, so and we need to add one more storybook. So and here we go. We have this this icon uh, storybook, and you can see how it looks now. Yeah, we need to fix it a little bit because right now we have trouble with uh, content in this uh, input. And here we can see our storybook with icon. Yeah, we just put to the arguments uh, argument icon. Yeah, and provide icon name user. Yeah. So and. Uh, Let's make one more type, style it input props with prop with icon. Yeah. So let's provide it to the style it input. And then based on this prop, we can change our placeholder uh, style. Yeah. Uh, padding left. Yeah. And for the padding left, when we have this with icon, we just add 2.8 RAM padding. When we have no any icon, we. Um, make it 1.4 RAM. Yeah, it's just regulation for our padding. So let's add this prop to the styled input. We need to add this uh, with icon and uh, let's just cast our icon as a boolean type and provide here icon. Yeah, in case when we have icon, it should, conv should uh, convert to uh, boolean value. Yeah, if we have no any icon, it's just undefined and boolean converted to false. Yeah, so let's check uh, how it looks in the storybook. Okay, here we go. Right now it looks much more better. Yeah, we have this primary input. Yeah, with uh, our regular text and this with icon um, variance. Yeah, when we put here an icon, and uh, you can uh, see when we make focus to this input, we just uh, drop redundant opacity. Yeah, make it uh, more brighter. 
And when we uh, lost our focus uh, in this uh, uh, component, we just make capacity 0 0.7. Then let's make our uh, check for our accessibility. And we have one incomplete um, trouble, yeah? Multiple label elements is not widely supported in assistive technologies, yeah? And probably there is about uh, this um, feedback, yeah, uh, property. So I can easily fix it. We just need to drop this uh, binding, yeah? We just need to drop this ID. Okay, right now it's just label, but it's not semantic label, yeah? It's just wrapper for this feedback. Let's continue to work with accessibility. And for the accessibility, we have one more useful tool is accessibility tab in Firefox. Yeah. And right now I detect that we have this trouble. Yeah. Content with images must be labeled. Yeah. We need to fix this trouble and we can see uh, possible scenarios. Yeah. Uh, content with uh, images must be labeled. Yeah. And we need to add alt uh, or uh, probably you have different kind of fix. We can add role and area label to fix this kind of trouble. Okay, so uh, we have this image icon, yeah, and then we just put here a uh, role image and area label based on the icon name. Yeah, it's kind of probably not a so good way to fix this trouble, but probably it's one of the possible options. And right now everything looks cool. Yeah, we have this graphic element user. Yeah, it's uh, yeah quite simple fix. We have no this trouble anymore. Okay, and for the feedback, yeah, let's just reload page. Yeah, because sometimes I find a trouble in the accessibility pan panel. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's kind of trouble that not uh, really happens. And we need to recheck it based on this accessibility panel. Yeah, and right now I have no any possible troubles. So let's check uh, with different uh, bunch of props and we still have no any problems. So, and I've checked everything you uh, in this accessibility panel and this accessibility helper in Storybook and everything looks cool. So, for the last step, let's add one more icon, yeah, I just want to add icon uh, search, yeah, because we want, basically, in the uh, this neuromorphic uh, input, we have search icon, yeah, so, and uh, I want to add to the input story icon search, yeah, and you can see this search icon in the input, yeah, and I find one problem in the React SVG icon, yeah, when I trying to find, like, example, a uh, search uh, icon, everything has broken, yeah, 500 internal server error, yeah, but actually we have approach where we can select icon set, like, example, and design icons, yeah, let's just open and design icons. And then we can look through this set and when we find something uh, that we want to include to our project, we can just uh, select our icon and copy SVG of this icon. Yeah, let's like example, take a look uh, to the step forward. Yeah, and you can see here we have this SVG. You need just copy this icon and then pass it to your component. And then you just need to add um, props and provide these props directly to the SVG icon. Yeah, and your icon should work fine. Then you need to export it in this uh, directive uh, export const icon. And you can then use it easily in your components input like example or any other kind of components. So right now our input components uh, looks uh, cool. Let's check it again in the storybook. Okay, so we have this uh, search icon right now. Yeah, we can put any uh, text text that we want. Yeah, you can uh, look to the different variants of this uh, component. Yeah, sometimes I have some troubles. Okay, but it's just minor stuff. So uh, last but not least, we need to add test cases for this input component 
And for the input, uh, let's uh, create a render check yeah, and basically provide here uh, input uh, with label and placeholder <clears throat> and with on change event. Then check uh, that our fragment um, looks fine yeah, with comparison with the previous version. Then render check with icon. We provide here uh, an icon prop, for example, search and match snapshot that uh, it looks cool. And uh, on change callback, yeah, we render our input and then we uh, find uh, by role our element and uh, call user event type and type some basic string and it means that we should call six times because our string is just six character long string uh, after these changes we uh, should detect that uh, we have been called uh, this six times so then let's just run our uh, watch current file mode our test case Okay, and we have one failed test case, yeah, but probably we need just to update snapshot, yeah, because we have some troubles with snapshot. Okay, let's update it. Right now we have updated snapshot and everything works fine, yeah. We have this snapshot, input, uh, test, testing snapshot. Okay, it looks, it looks good for me, yeah, everything looks fine. Uh, yeah, this uh, variant with icon, this with, without any icon, yeah. So, looks like we've done our uh, input component, but let's finally just run uh, npm test to be sure that everything works fine. Okay, we've detected four failed snapshots. Let's just update our snapshots. Because we have snapshots for the input and for the icon, yeah, and uh, for the for the feedback as well, yeah. So let's update it and then re let's run rerun our test cases again. So and after update, we have um, 19 tests uh, that has passed. Okay, so looks like we've done our input component. So see you in the next video. Bye. Let's make small refactoring because I see some potential troubles with these breaks, like example, and with this styled input uh, where we have this with icon. Yeah, we have this part in left that just recalculates depend on do we have some icons or not, and we have this fixed width and height. It means we cannot to rescale this input. We cannot to uh make it more uh, flexible and in this case let's just uh, consider possibility how can we rewrite this component without these breaks and without this flag this icon let's just drop these breaks and then we can look to the label component yeah label component it's kind of common wrapper yeah and we can use it as flex box and in this case we can add display flex justify content flex start flex direction column yeah and uh, probably it can work fine for us let's take a look okay here we go we have this component it's absolutely the same yeah but we have no padding right over here for the label but we have padding for this uh, feedback yeah so and for the icon component and for the invalid feedback and for the valid feedback it looks cool so how can we fix our trouble with padding first of all let's drop this padding left for the label yeah just let's drop common padding for this label and for this label then let's create text component that just spun with our padding 1.4 rem so then for we just wrap our label by this text and our feedback by this text too and here we have this kind of check if we have this label then we just render this text yeah if we have this feedback by the same way we render this feedback text you can see how it looks now and uh, it looks uh, as we expected yeah probably for all of our scenarios it looks cool 
So then uh, let's consider a possibility. How can we change our widths and height dynamically? And because of this possibility re uh, of rendering label, we can uh, add uh, label as non-required field. So then let's just uh, reshuffle required field in the top of this props. And for the tail, we have this label as non-required field icon feedback and hide and weeds yeah that we can manipulate that's it this weeds and hide props uh and set up some default values yeah because we by default have heights uh for ram and weeds 20 ram and um, mm, so here we have uh, this default values then we need to provide it to the start input right over here yeah we just put here height and widths and then let's just add height and widths right over here yeah as uh, numbers yeah widths and height and then add uh, units ram yeah then let's take a look to the browser and here we go right now we have this input let's just set up some widths and height sample height five or 10 yeah and then widths like example 10 or i know 50 okay <laughs> too much 20 yeah like example okay and uh, let's check all of our scenarios yeah and for the icon let's like example change height like example 10 and that's trouble yeah <laughs> we have trouble with this icon component yeah and i don't like this kind of behavior where we when we have this uh, icon in the uh, beginning of our input component yeah uh to be uh by the same scenario to be more precise we can move this icon to the tail of this component yeah because we have a bunch of rules that works fine with this label and feedback and with this placeholder so uh, we need to change all of our logic just because of this icon let's move this icon to the tail of component and everything should look cool Let's create component input wrapper and we set up display flex and align items center. Yeah? So then let's wrap our stylet input and our icon component by this wrapper. Then let's drop this with icon yeah? and then let's drop this type. Uh, yeah, stylet input props and we don't need this logic anymore yeah we just have this fixed 1.4 ram button left right now and you can see how it looks yeah right now we have uh the same behavior for all of our inputs and this icon we have this input and then here we have this icon yeah so uh what do we need to change to make these things works fine yeah we need to make a uh, uh, movement of this icon um to the input yeah so let's just uh refactor this stylet icon and let's add just margin left minus 2.5 RAM and color uh, that depends on placeholder, yeah? And let's, um, yeah, keep this opacity as is. Let's check how it looks and it, it looks much more better, yeah? Uh, now I can put some text, yeah? And one more trouble, yeah? We need to add padding, not to overlap by this icon or content that under, um, that under this icon, yeah? So, and for these purposes, let's change uh, padding in our uh, component styled input, yeah? And we have this padding left. Let's uh, replace it by common padding rule, yeah? From the top, we have zero. Then from the right side, 2.6 RAM. Uh, then zero and 1.4 RAM from the left side, yeah? Actually, we can synchronize both of these paddings, but probably it's not a big deal. Uh, let's check how it looks in the browser now, yeah? And uh, when we put some content, yeah, it looks much more better, yeah? We have no this overlap now. 
uh, for the primary input it's probably by the same way we have this space a little bit more than from the left side but i can leave it as is yeah without any problems yeah so looks like we reach our goals last but not least let's uh, rerun our test cases uh, in watch mode yeah so then we just run and of course we <laughs> uh, going to have troubles with snapshots yeah and you can see it right over here we have two snapshots that failed and uh, because of uh, this just watch current file uh, we can press U to update failing snapshots and then uh, here we go yeah without any troubles now it works fine so finally we have this input refactoring it looks much more better and it makes sense because we are gonna to manipulate by this width and height and now it looks very good and we um, rerun our snapshots testing yeah we just regenerate these snapshots so looks like we've done it so see you and today i want to start to develop a layout component and based on this property grid template areas that's very wonderful property you can uh, create template and then uh, make different template per uh, specific media query. Yeah? You have these areas uh, that you just mark as A, B, C, yeah, or whatever, yeah, any kind of word or symbol. And then you can uh, just uh, install these particular symbols to the places where it should be. Yeah? In, in this example, you can see that uh, depending on the position of this symbol you have absolutely different layouts yeah so it's very wonderful way to build a uh, very very convenient and uh, very very flexible grids so and here we go we have a uh, wrapper stylet logo uh, that just uh, wrap uh, our logo yeah we just want to extend styles for the logo uh, main navigation area search input we just wrap our uh, basic input component uh, content and footer yeah and here we have our layout so uh, you have uh, we you can see that here we have main navigation but we have no any link inside this navigation for the navigation we have this link component from next link yeah it's special link that we're going to use uh, to make some roads in our application and here we have icon button component that we developed on the previous uh, sessions and then in this main navigation i just put uh, several links and icon button yeah that uh, i'll gonna to uh, make as a theme theme toggler yeah from dark to light mode and let's set up our wrapper as grid then put here a gap yeah that i just install gap between our areas uh text color based on font regular and background color based on background so putting 0.5 ram it should be enough and let's put grid template areas yeah so we have this <clears throat> column layout probably it should be for the smallest displays possible yeah uh, this column mode where where every component uh next to each other yeah and then we just install grid area per every element for the stylet logo it's area header for the main navigation it's navigation for the search search and so on and so far so you can see that now we have header navigation search content and footer so and we have uh, the same bunch of element in our um, in our render yeah uh, stylet logo navigation search content and footer and we can see how it looks now yeah so right now it's just a bunch of uh, elements that follow next to each other and you can see that we have no any changes when we like example change our resolution
First of all, let's fix our navigation. And probably we can use flex, justify content space around, align item center, and padding 0.5 rem. And then for the links that inside our navigation, we set up cursor pointer, color font regular, and hover opacity uh, 0 0.7. So let's check how it looks now. And it looks much more better yeah we have this uh, links and here we have our button yeah and when we change our uh, resolution to like example small mobile or like uh, horizontal and vertical mode you can see that right now it looks much more better let's add more styles for our wrapper yeah and of course we can use media queries and for the mean width 500 pixels we are going to use this grid template areas button yeah we have header search nav nav content content footer footer and grid template columns it's kind of uh, proportion yeah uh, or fixed size that we want to apply per this columns yeah for these columns of course yeah uh and you can see uh this fraction units it means that we just uh create uh dynamic fractions yeah now we have four fraction uh su summary uh and then we apply one fraction to this grid template area and for the second we apply three uh fractions yeah it's dynamic uh measure uh that of course uh, works fine with this gap yeah it automatically includes this gap and recalculates areas as we want so and then for the navigation we have uh, display flex yeah but actually for the navigation we uh, already have this flex we can drop it uh, flex direction row uh, for the average widths and align item center uh, but actually we have a line item center by default we can drop it and we have justify content space uh, between for the mean width 500 pixels let's check how it looks in the browser now yeah <clears throat> just let's reload our page and then let's uh, check for the small mobile and then you can see how it looks for the average uh for the average yeah um uh, resolution yeah we have this uh yeah this not not good picture for the small and this uh, looks much more better for the average resolution okay so let's fix probably a uh, mobile version let's check what happens yeah what happens when we have this mobile mode and probably the reason why we have these troubles is because our input yeah and when i just change our bits to like example 10 ram you can see this columns mode works fine yeah everything looks cool so probably we need to uh make this input refactoring again we have these props height and widths yeah and then we put it to the styled input yeah but styled input wrapped by this label yeah and probably we need to make this label widths uh like uh, regularized props yeah but the styled input just must be uh, uh depend on the widths of this label so let's refactor this width and height and let's make it 100%. So then let's create a new type label props that we provide to this label. And then let's install some width and height based on this width and height props that should be in this label. So then let's use this label props, yeah, because we have this input uh, width and height property. We just uh, combine together our props with label props, yeah. So, and you can see how it looks now, yeah. We have uh, this 100% width uh, label, yeah, and with icon, uh, it looks right now looks looks cool yeah but it, it's not something that i really expected yeah so let's uh, change default values for width and height we change our uh, height from four to seven and then let's take class name property 
it's very important because our extend uh, <laughs> our possibility how can we extend styles using styling component based on this class name prop Let's put right now for the label width, height, and class name. And then we don't need it, this width and height for our styled input. And then let's add to the input wrapper width and height 100% too. Yeah, so our input wrapper uh, based on label width and height and our styled input based on input wrapper width and height. Let's check how it looks in the browser. Okay, and here we go, right? Now it looks much more better, yeah? So, we have this primary input, we have this uh, valid feedback, yeah, and with icon. So, let's, like example, change our reads to, I don't know, some, uh, some value, like example, 20. Okay, everything works fine, yeah, and in case when we set up height, like example, 8 or 7 or 6, it works fine, yeah? But I see one potential risk with this SVG icon, yeah? Uh, you can see when I just switch off this margin left, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of with trouble, yeah? And uh, it not looks good, yeah? We can uh, face with some troubles when our width for our input uh, would be like example dynamic. And let's add position absolute and... Uh, um, Right, 0.3 RAM, but we should position based on some element with position relative, yeah. And when we uh, put to the um, our uh, input wrapper position relative, and for the SVG element position absolute and right 0.3 RAM, it looks uh, fine, yeah. And right now have widths that based just only on the widths. Let's set right over here to the styled icon position absolute right 0.3 RAM. Okay. And one more thing, yeah, <laughs> we need for the input wrapper at position relative. So, and right now we can check in the browser how it looks. Yeah. So, okay, and I need just to select icon, yeah, moon or user, and you can see how it looks now, yeah, everything works fine. Okay, and right now for our search input in the layout, we just need to add width 100% and height for RAM. So, right now we can check in the browser how it looks for the layout component, okay. Let's check for the small mobile. Okay, it looks much more better, yeah, and when we change orientation, yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks cool, yeah, when we reset our um, layout, yeah, it still looks good, yeah, but we can improve it, because this search, it's too big, yeah, we need to make it uh, smaller and uh, put uh, this navigation menu to the right side, okay, but we will do it on the next lesson, so, see you, bye. What should we do at the end of every refactoring? And of course we need to run test cases, yeah? We have input test.tsx that we can run in watch uh, current file mode, yeah? And we'll see the result that, of course, expected behavior that we should have two failed test cases, yeah? And two snapshots uh, failed. Because we changed render behavior yeah and right now we have two snapshots that failed and we need to update this to uh snapshots yeah so for these purposes we need to press u to update failing snapshots and you can see now that we have three past test cases we uh we've updated our snapshots okay what should we do next and we have this wrapper and as far as I remember, we have this media query for mean width 500 pixels, yeah? And then we need uh, to make media query for the large displays. And mean width for the large displays, it's something like 700 pixels. Grid template columns, you can see fractions that we want to use. And then grid template areas. Uh, in the top we have header, search and navigation, then content area and footer in the bottom of our application. 
flex direction row for the navigation as far as you remember we have main navigation that just uh, styled nav component yeah it's grid area nav <clears throat> and we have justify content space around but actually for the main navigation component we have the same space around okay so this main navigation i want to remind you it's right over here yeah it's uh, one, first block it's our logo then we have this main navigation then search input then content and footer let's take a look uh, to the storybook just to check how it looks for the large uh, displays and you can see it now yeah we have this logo then search search then we have this navigation we can check for the small uh just one sec i need to switch off uh this uh tool yeah uh this and measure tool uh let's check how it looks to the small mobile yeah we have a uh, great template for the small mobile but we need to center this logo Okay, for the average resolution, we have a template like this. We have a logo and search panel, then menu and main navigation and footer. And for the big displays, we have this uh, scheme where we have uh, a logo, then search, then navigation panel, uh, main content area and footer. Let's make several more changes. Let's add for the stylet logo, display flex, align item center and height for RAM. Yeah? Then for the media query uh, with max with 500 pixels, let's justify content uh, to the center. Yeah, just to center our logo. And let's center everything in the footer. Just make display flex, uh, flex direction row, align item center, justify content space around, and hide 5 frame. Okay, it should be enough. Okay, you can see it now. We have a uh, centered logo uh, for the small display, yeah, and for all of the rest our components everything looks by the same way for the average resolution we have this centered uh, footer yeah it looks uh, much more better now and for the big display we have no any changes at all yeah except this footer that just have centered uh, content and right now we have no any functionality for the stylet logo i suppose that we need to make it uh, as link to the main page to the root uh, location let's just wrap our stylet logo by link with uh, location root and you can see a notification from the uh, yes link yeah pass href is missing it means that we need to, in case when we have some specific link with specific uh, styles we need to wrap it by this next.js link and provide a real link component below with styles that we need let's create under like example style it logo a logo link and it's just style it link uh, then we just unset unset all pro, uh, styles and make cursor pointer and when we hover just change opacity a little bit to make this uh, link dynamic just to notify user that this is interactive element yeah okay so and then let's just uh make a link and put pass href uh, property then put here our logo link and wrap uh, our stylet logo by logo link and then by this link okay so let's check how it looks in the browser okay so and you can see that this just interactive element yeah we have this opacity notification okay so let's check uh, check it on the light uh, background and you can see small changes of opacity when we uh, put cursor to the area of visibility of this element let's check for the small mobile you can see the same result yeah for the dark background too yeah so let's change uh, orientation of our device uh, yeah we have uh, this uh, link behavior when we click to this link we have uh, root location pass but storybook of course uh, doesn't matter at all about our location in our application
So last but not least, we have this layout and we just return some uh, some rendering uh, data in JSX so we can drop this return uh, and uh, this notation means that we just return uh, uh, this kind of uh, data that we need for this function. Yeah, in this case, it's just JSX code. So let's add test case and we have just very, very... Uh, yeah um, simple test case we just uh, check render yeah we just check that we render our layout with a uh, child and then we expect that our fragments um, should works fine yeah we just should match snapshots okay and you can see the result we have one pass test case uh everything works fine okay so looks like we've done our layout basic layout uh probably during the development process we change it a little bit and of course it uh um will in different video yeah so see you before this moment we've been using storybook without any next just uh, framework environment yeah so and right now i want to install this layout in the next JS with uh, theme switcher yeah so for this purposes we're gonna to use up and this app it's uh in the pages uh file underscore app.js or ts or tsx uh, where we have a persistent uh, layout between uh, page changes, uh, keep state when navigation page, custom error handling, like example, inject additional data to the pages and global CSS. So it's um, probably one of the best places where we can put layout with the uh, theme switcher. Here is our app dot uh, tsx yeah and that's the place where we can import layout and then we can wrap our component by our layout yeah and it should be persistent layout per all of our pages yeah this kind of layout that we can see when we run our dev server for this purposes we can run a script dev yeah next dev uh, and you can see different options yeah build start and lint and uh, it should be enough for us just npm run dev but you need to remember that we have in the layout okay let's open layout we have uh, our components and our components gonna do you the um, as you can see a yeah, theme font regular theme background and so on and so far we need to wrap everything by theme provider yeah right now our layout layout won't work let's import uh, theme provider and let's import themes yeah right now we can provide to the theme provider our theme then let's take like example dark theme and then let's wrap everything by this theme provider and here we go right now I have this layout yeah you can see that uh, here is our home page yeah our search and this roads yeah we can uh, tap some news all yeah but we have no any roads for these pages and we have uh, error yeah for these pages so I see one trouble with font yeah right now our logo is just text yeah without our font so we need to add font to our application for the font we have different place where we can uh put a link to the font it's custom document custom document can update the html and body text uh used to render a page yeah and document it's something that only rendered on the server so uh event handler like on click cannot be used in the document so it means that we can put right over here a link to our font and here we go we uh wrap everything by html we have custom head uh, body and main and next script okay so here we have 
trouble with link yeah and uh, display parameter is missing it's very important parameter uh, in the href where we signal how can we uh, handle our fonts yeah in the moment when we download our fonts and display optional it's one of the probably most usable option here we have information about font display yeah and this descriptor determines how a font face is displayed <clears throat> okay and when we have option uh, if the font can be loaded immediately uh, so the font is used otherwise the font is treated as if it's uh, block period and swap period both expires before it finished loading yeah in other words uh, optional it means that we uh, use this font as optional yeah if we have no loaded font in block period we just use some default font uh, some fallback font that we have in the system and probably the best strategy is swap when we have small block period but when we download our font we just swap our previous fallback font to the font that we uh we've been downloading yeah okay in our case we just use display swap let's restart our dev server and let's take a look to the browser yeah to our page all right and right now we have this logo yeah we have this uh search we have this menu and about themes yeah i want to have default theme based on the user preference and uh, when user want to switch i want to use this button yeah uh, that we put in the menu as theme switcher first of all i believe that we probably don't need this global styles anymore okay but let's leave it as is we just drop it when we're going to develop our home page so uh, let's uh, import use state and then we just create dynamic state that we need for our theme. Then let's uh, create this dynamic state. Uh, we provide to the use state default false and we have this flag is dark and set is dark. So based on this flag we define user theme yeah is dark in case when it's true we uh, use dark mode in case when it's light we use light mode how can we read information about user preference and we have one pattern uh, we need to uh, call use effect and then in the uh, in our my app yeah we need to call use effect and provide here set is dark uh, but instead of value we just want to match media query prefers color theme uh, dark yeah uh, so it means that we uh, want to find color preference in uh, the user environment and in case when it's dark we return true and set is dark to the true why should we use this hook use effect because of uh, this window yeah when we try to render uh, pages on the server side uh, we always face with the trouble yeah I can show you this trouble okay I just put uh, this uh, window match media then let's run rerun dev server and let's check how it looks in the browser okay let's reload our page and you can see that window is not defined because we just trying to compile in the backend environment this code and window is not defined it's one of the most uh, <laughs> probably um, often uh, error that we can face so let's just fix it we just need to wrap uh okay use state by default we provide a value false and to the use effect we uh provide here set is dark and then we call window match media matches yeah and in case when we call this code on the server we won't directly use uh call this use effect yeah and we won't have any troubles with this window yeah so it means that we read uh, user preference and based on the user preference we then just uh, apply theme that we need we put it to the theme provider let's create one more function toggle 
dark yeah just to make some toggler between dark and light mode we just uh switch yeah this boolean state between true and false when we click to this uh toggle uh, when we call this toggle dark callback so for the layout we need to provide possibility to uh put here a callback for the icon button yeah where we have this moon and let's create new props and here we have this on team toggler let's provide it to functional component props and then we can destructuring this on team toggler prop and put it to the icon button on click property so it means that when we click to this toggler we just can uh, run this mechanism to switch team okay and then in the props let's put is dark uh black yeah when we have dark mode and when we have light mode we gonna have different state for this flag so let's uh change this icon button behavior when it's dark i want to have moon uh, icon when we when it's light we have sun yeah icon so it means when we switch uh, our uh, our uh, theme yeah we just uh, gonna to notify user that then you can switch it back yeah so in the layout we need to provide on theme toggler toggle dock and uh, then let's put is dock uh, flag yeah so is dock okay let's check it in the browser okay here we go when we click to this button you can see that we immediately switch uh, theme yeah and let's just reload page yeah and we have this default user preference i have no idea why i have uh, light preference uh, because it's probably uh, depend on my uh, os yeah and, but when i click and uh, persistently switch it to the dark mode you can see dark theme and light theme everything works fine okay uh, so see you to build home page let's make one more component course that just gonna to be tile that render our course preview and you can see the basic template uh, for the course yeah let's make a uh, first step and we need to import style from emotion style then let's create basic section yeah and this section it uh, will be just a wrapper for our course so we just wrap all of our content by this section our section uh, should be display flags with flags direction columns with align items center and justify content center so then let's gonna to use uh, background uh, based on theme background and font color based on theme font regular as far as I remember, we have box shadow and border radius as common styles from styles in the components that we can import and then apply to our section border radius and this uh, theme we just create box shadow. So then let's make basic padding for this section and let's stop now. Yeah, I believe that this bunch of styles basically provide for us enough functionality, enough functionality to render our curves. So then using destructurization right over here, we can destruct children and put it inside our section. And what uh, what do we, what should we have except these children? Yeah, and of course we need to add header. Let's just make this uh, type props and uh, header type string, and then provide it to the generic functional component. Then we can easily uh, destructure our header and put it inside our section as well as children, yeah? And right now we have this section with this header and with this children. And we need to add one more thing. We should add preview image to our course. And in the Next.js we have special component image for these purposes. It's one of the most important component in the Next.js framework because uh, a lot of requirements we have for the images that we need to use in the web. 
uh, it should be fast it um, as you can see yeah achieve uh, performance uh, according with good uh, core web vitals yeah and uh, inside this component we have improved performance visual stability faster page loading and assets flexibility yeah because we can apply uh, on demand image resizing and stuff like this it's very useful component and for the modern web applications image of course uh, means a lot yeah so and um, it's quite simple we need to import image then we can uh, import a local image from our public directory and then uh, you just need to use this image component provide src uh, that should uh, point to the image path and then everything uh, should be installed by this image component it's very uh, easy to use and it's a lot of functionality under the hood of this component you can use remote uh, images as well but for the remote images we should provide information about width and height by our own because uh, in this case we cannot to read this information from the uh, remote source and we need to provide this width and height by our own because i want to use this image component inside our course i need to uh, like use proxy pattern i just receive a property that i need to put uh, below in the hierarchy of the components yeah and i should have something like this yeah image props uh i can call it image uh, props yeah but what type it should be yeah because uh we need to look to the image and we have this notation for the image component based on image props and everything that we need inside this type image props that we can import from the next image directly without any problems yeah so we can use this special type image props and it's quite simple we just destructuring image props from our uh, props and then put it to the image component yeah and we have uh, right now this small warning about uh, properties that should be required for the image component and image elements must have alt prop uh, either with meaningful text or an empty string for decorative image it means that we need to provide for the image component full set of the properties when we gonna to use this course component and let's provide for the arguments uh, data that we need to render our course and i believe that it should be enough our header uh, with a course basic description image properties and children uh, with uh, description of this course you can see that we apply image props we have this width height alt and src attributes that we installed uh, to our image and then of course you already know that children it's jessix code and we don't need controls for the jessix we just provide to the arguments type children called controls control false because we don't need to regulate it from the storybook ui side let's check how it looks now but before we check uh, let's uh, open public and let's create directory covers where we just put our image that's going to be preview for our course okay so we have this image and we need to add this path to the src let's put uh, covers and then hands-on react.js cover.png okay and i believe that right now everything should works fine let's check in the storybook and here we go we have this um preview on the small mobile device we can change uh, device orientation and you can see how it looks now yeah and we can reset viewport yeah but it looks uh, yeah not by the way that i really expected yeah this image is too big and i don't see a description under this image probably we need to add some information about widths uh, for the display 
Let's move information about padding and stuff uh, to the bottom of our styles in the uh, style section. Yeah, uh, this padding that we want and this widths and uh, media for the you know, 900 pixels display or more. Yeah, uh, we just have a widths uh, 80, 90 for uh, view. Uh, width uh, for the small display and when we have uh, display uh, larger than 900 pixels we just uh, shrink width to 46 view width and you can see the result now yeah we have this preview for the large display and when we switch to the small mobile you can see that it looks uh, yeah, it looks uh, cool for the small mobile yeah but we have small scrolling uh, but I believe that it's because of uh, paddings of the storybook, yeah? Okay, let's reset viewport and probably we can put uh, two tiles for the preview of the courses in this case. So, and last but not least, we need to add link that wrap everything and uh, lead us to the page of the particular course. For these purposes, we need to import link component from the Next.js and then we just wrap everything by this link. Okay, but we need to add one more prop, yeah, link address. Okay, and we have this link address that we can uh, destruct right over here and then put it to the href property. By the same way uh, we've done before in the layout component, we just use link component and this pass href attributes to wrap our logo link component that just styled link uh, and probably it's absolutely the same way to the curse. We have this curse link component and then we can wrap our section. Uh, sorry, just one more sec, yeah, uh, by this pass href property and then just close our course link, yeah. Right now we have this link that's styled by the way that we uh, need and we've wrapped it by this link with pass href property. Okay, so let's check how it looks. We just need to add this uh, link attribute in the arguments, yeah, and uh, right now we can check in the browser how it looks, yeah. So we have this, uh, yeah, handler, when we press to this tail, uh, you can see how we redirect to the hands-on React.js uh, location. And we have one trouble in this case, you can see, yeah, that right now, we have hover, uh, not when we uh, move our cursor to the area of visibility to this element. We just can hover to any place of the page. And you can see this effect now, yeah? We don't need it. And we need to put this link and curse link under the section component, yeah? Something like this, yeah? Section should wrap our link and uh, course link and everything. Uh, and then we can manipulate by the styles. Then we can move this padding to this course link. And let's drop this special padding for the bottom because I don't need it. Okay, let's make one... Uh, 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 minimum uh, value, yeah, viewport value and four viewport value uh, to the right and left and one for the top and bottom. Okay, so let's check how it looks now. And here we go. Right now I can make hover, yeah, and it looks cool at any place of this uh, component. When I click, I just gonna to move to the hands-on React.js link, okay, but we have no dislocation in the storybook, of course. Okay, everything looks as we expected. Let's check to the small mobile. You can see for the small mobile we have full uh, widths, yeah? When we uh, change orientation, device orientation, it works as well. So, and for the uh, large viewport, we have this uh, probably half of the screen tile for the course preview. Okay, looks like we've done it. Okay, so see you. Let's finish our course component 
And of course, per every component, we need to add interactions to this storybook. And in the basic course, we have this uh, interactions. We just trying to find heading and image. Okay, I believe that it should be enough, but we can add something else. Let's find link uh, the link component as well. Yeah, because we have link and image and header. Okay, now it looks cool. And then we have course test cases and it's just uh, rendering check yeah we should check that our snapshots looks fine let's run our test case in watch mode yeah and right now we'll see the result you can see that we have one written snapshot yeah we can uh, regenerate uh, rerun our test case and you can see that we have past test case yeah and right now have this snapshot that matched uh, that is matched with previous version. Also, we can look to the storybook and you can see in the interactions tab we uh, have to be in the document heading, image and link components. And then I want to remind you about this component course link. Yeah, you can see how it looks. It's just link with uh, all on set, cursor pointer, hover behavior and additional padding. Yeah, so let's check in the layout. We have this logo link Yeah, by the same bunch of styles. And probably we can make one universal component that we're going to use per, uh, for every component that need this kind of link. Okay, here we go. It's just simple link component with all on set, cursor pointer, color by default font regular and hover opacity 0 0.9. Yeah, we have test case that gonna to check just render of this styled link. Uh, we have story, yeah, that just uh, provide for us uh, component styled link and then we have this uh, children and then sure have property that we provide to this basic styled link uh, storybook and here we have interaction that just expect that we have uh, by role uh, link component that to be in the document and here we go right now I have this re result with this kind of link yeah you can see interactions works fine so it looks like text but with hover behavior and with link behavior as well we can run this uh, test case be sure that everything works fine so you can see the result right now we uh just regenerate yeah uh, just run our test case and write one snapshot in the styled link component as far as i remember we have index file per, uh, for every component with export di directive and here we have uh, styled link export so then we can uh, import this styled link for the course yeah we don't need this test case anymore so so oh, and that's uh, is the import of styled link. So then we can use styled API. Just wrap our uh, link by this styled and provide padding that we need uh, to our course link. Yeah. So for the layout, we have this logo link and this logo link. It's absolutely the same as our basic styled link yeah it's just the same bunch of bunch of properties it means that we can import this styled link right over here and drop this logo link right over here yeah and then let's replace this logo link by the styled link okay right now when we have universal styles for the link let's just run our test cases we don't need storybook anymore let's npm uh, run npm test in watch mode sorry but we need to add watch flag yeah to make this in watch mode so then we'll see the result right now we have two failed test cases it's just because two snapshots has been failed and we can see the result yeah we have uh layout test six uh snapshot that 
uh, failed yet, yeah, and we have uh, course.test.t6 that we need to regenerate because we have real changes for this uh, for this component. So uh, we need to press U to update failing snapshots, and then we just regenerate two snapshots, and everything uh, works as we expected. Yeah, we have uh, past test cases. So then I just going to update README and add this information about uh, lessons. Yeah, uh, next image and course component and course component refactoring. It's just current uh, lesson. Yeah. So and I just uh, increase this pull request number at the end of this link. So and right now. Uh, looks like we ready. Yeah, we can make commit and then push. So then we just make compare and pull request and create new pull request uh, with this uh, course component. You can look at the, all of our pull requests, uh, press start button, make fork. It's absolutely uh, open for you. Okay, so uh, looks like we've done our course component with all necessary refactoring. So see you in the next video. Let's today make our home page. Yeah, it's it was a long way to build our first Next.js page. And first of all, let's drop our styles. I believe that we don't need this global and this home model anymore. Let's uh, drop it and let's drop this import styles uh, because we don't need this global and this style for the home page. Let's drop this default JSX uh, code for the rendering for the home component for the home page. And our home page, it's uh, next page. Yeah, it's special type from next.js. And we should export default our component that we need for the page. Let's wrap everything by the fragment because I don't want to have redundant elements in my application. And let's put like example head. Head it's kind of component from Next.js that provide for us possibility to put um, elements to the head of our page. Yeah, you know, head like metadata, title, uh, links, styles and stuff like this. In this case, we have title courses box, description, like example, IT courses for everyone. Okay, so then uh, fav icon, if you want to have fav icon for this page. And probably we don't need this uh, next image component anymore. Let's import our course component. And I don't have any real content now. Let's make some dump page, yeah, with dump content. And for this purposes, we can use pattern like this array. Then we provide how many, how long our array uh, should be. In this case, it's four items. Then we fill every item by some content. And I just put right over here our course basic render, yeah, with header, with link, and with image props, and then with uh, children content like this. Okay, so looks like we've done some part of our homepage. Let's run and check how it looks. When we want to run our next JS, we should use npm run dev to run our dev server. Okay, here we go. Right now I have this basic render. Yeah, you can see how it looks now. It's actually not something that I really, <laughs> really expected. Yeah, right now I have this uh, redundant padding and we have this one column layout. Probably we need to make small refactoring. First of all, let's import style because I want to make more components in this page. And let's create styled component. I want to call it courses wrapper uh, with display flex with flex wrap wrap because I want to uh, wrap my courses. Yeah, uh, when we have no enough um, widths of the page, uh, gap to uh, VW. Yeah, it's unit that just 
um, size fraction of my width and margin uh, to uh, bh and uh, one uh, vw yeah and from the top and bottom we just use fraction of height from the right and left fraction of width so then we need to wrap by this curse wrapper our curse list yeah let's wrap everything by this uh, curse wrapper okay here we go uh, let's right now check how it looks in the storybook and now it looks much more better yeah it makes sense so we have this uh, positioning for the for our uh, courses let's just shrink size of the yeah on the screen and we have a real adaptive mode yeah but we need to fix it a little bit because on some resolution we have one column layout but we really need to put two columns in this case or one uh or this uh, you know when we have this one column layout we should make this uh, courses uh, tiles uh, more than this yeah because we need to uh, fill all of our widths and i want to remind you what we have dropped in the global css we drop padding and mugging yeah, so it means that we need to apply it in somewhere. And we have global styles um, using Emotion React. And right now we have this global font. And uh, I already ever already added this um, HTML and body padding and mugging. So it's very important for our application. But where should we put these global styles? I have one great place it's underscore document yeah where we can put our default styles we just need to import global from emotion react then we need import global styles from our styles global and then put a global to the head like example and insert these styles uh, like global styles you can see how it looks now yeah we have this uh default yeah mugging and padding for our html and body like uh, equals zero and in the hat you can easily recognize css global style data emotion yeah and we have this font family poppins and this html and body padding and mugging that equals zero yeah so let's experiment with our adaptive template yeah when i just trim my widths you can see that everything rebuilds inside uh, my application yeah when i just uh, have this white resolution we have two columns layout uh, for our courses yeah when i click of course i i'll go to the 404 because we have no any real page for the course but for the home page everything looks uh much more better yeah it looks like real application now let's make small changes for our layout and for this smallest uh, possible widths we have non effective way to use our space yeah we have this logo and this menu but probably we can put logo and menu on the same uh, row so it means we can make it a little bit more efficient we have this one column template grid template areas let's make it a little bit more different we can use two template the two column layout but we just use header enough in the first row and for the rest of uh, the rows we have uh, just like one column template yeah we have uh, just search on the same row content and footer okay and then we need to apply for the navigation flex direction row justify content flex and to um, make it in the right uh, corner yeah we're just gonna to um, align everything by the right side but with gap five uh a fraction of minimum widths or height yeah we mean it means that we take a fraction that minimal in this contest the context yeah it, it can be widths or height yeah depend on who is uh, what side uh, is less yeah 
and we can look to the result it looks much more better now uh yeah we have this menu this button that just switch our uh mode yeah dark or light but we have this uh logo that on the center now but i want to make it on the left side yeah align to the left side because here we have right side aligning and here we should have left side so let's just uh, drop this align when we have uh, max speeds 500 pixels and add uh, justify content flex start and then let's check how it looks now yeah it looks much more better we have this logo we have this menu and we can look to the different mode yeah dark and light okay i can make it a uh, little bit more yeah and it looks it looks much more efficient yeah because we just rebuilt our template uh according with real size on our screen yeah and we use every uh every pixel by the efficient way yeah much more efficient for this menu and for this logo and let's make small changes for the 500 pixels template let's add just template areas header nav and search search yeah we just uh we just make it by the same way as for the smallest template and probably in this case we don't need any changes at all we just need to drop yeah let's drop this because i don't want to change anything in the navigation for this template let's just uh, put here grid template columns yeah and last but not least let's make changes for this media query let's make it from 960 pixels and then drop this navigation changes as well so right now looks uh, like we're ready for test let's switch to the browser and uh, here we go right now for the smallest resolution we have theme like this we have this uh, uh logo this menu and search uh below both of these components so then when we uh, increase in size of our screen you can see that we rebuilt our uh, our uh, course tails yeah uh but we have no any changes still have no any changes for the search and for this panel but then when we uh increase more than uh 960 pixels we just uh move the search to the top panel okay so and um we actually have this c8x yeah but uh probably we can uh use whole name of our uh project cursor box in case when we have enough place uh yeah when we have enough place on the screen so let's make it let's add two uh possible options yeah uh for this uh courses box logo yeah when we have logo short and when we have logo full and then for the start logo let's add this logic yeah uh, by default we just hide full logo yeah but when uh minimal width 560 pixels we just uh switch uh logo short to display none and logo full, full to display in light so let's check how it looks now okay here we go we need to update of course our page and actually i have a real trouble with this logo yeah because i mark uh, every uh item on my page by phone family popping sans serif and it a roll up of my phone family that i apply for our component so let's fix it and probably one uh fix that i can see that we can move this phone family to html and body and just drop this star selector let's take a look now okay it looks much more better and let's test uh our uh, courses box yeah you can see how it works yeah when we have enough uh space we just put here full uh name of our application yeah courses box and then when we have enough place we just move this search box uh yeah to the top panel of our application okay looks much more better okay i don't want to make this video longer than 10 minutes okay so see you in the next video where we continue uh to develop our application home page so see you
Let's continue to develop home component and instead of this spotting 0.5 RAM, let's add mugging from the right and left side to make some space between uh, main navigation and components surrounded. Then let's create component logo link that just wrap our stylet link. And we just add some padding right one uh, view widths, yeah? Then let's use this logo link into our um, uh, logo, yeah? Like logo wrapper. Instead of this styled link, let's add this logo link. So then let's check everything in the browser. When we start from the minimal resolution as possible, then continue to grow uh, from the width perspective. We have this toggle of uh, our logo yeah, to the courses box. Then when we have enough space, we just put, push this uh, search uh, panel to the top. Yeah, and we have this one header that going to start from uh, 960 pixels. And then we continue to grow uh, and probably for every displays, we have absolutely the same uh, view. So, uh, and we have one more important toggle. When we switch between one column uh, in the main content area to the two column uh, model. Let's check test cases for the layout and looks like we need to add uh, more properties for the layout, yeah? Because right now we just trying to render layout with child. Let's add, uh, render like this yeah we don't need this uh, just child rendering we should uh, provide here properties is dark and on theme toggle yeah and then this child so let's just switch off uh, our dev server and then let's run our test case in watch mode and of course we have one snapshot that has been failed yeah we need to regenerate our snapshots because we have uh, style updates okay and right now I have one past test case and one snapshot that had been update updated and one more important thing that we need to look at here we have a uh, 400 error when we trying to um, call image optimizer yeah for the hands-on react.js cover Okay, so let's take a look to this um, tile and you can see that we right now just trying to open uh, image bypass a hands-on React JS cover, cover, yeah. But actually we have additional folder uh, in the public that calls covers. Okay, and we need to add uh, this folder. Okay, and right now we can look to the browser and everything should works fine probably we uh, have this image in the previous version because of some local cache or stuff uh, and right now we can see that we have no any error yeah you can look at the console and we have no any 400 error yeah in this case so looks like we've done our home page okay so let's take a look what we have done just for review Right now I have this uh, page, yeah, we have this logo that linked to the main um, page, yeah. We have this menu, yeah, but right now we have no any pages under this menu. So we have a uh, dark and light mode for our application. And also we have these tiles for uh, the content of our uh, application, yeah, that I want to sell for my customers, yeah. But we have no uh, any... Uh, real pages under this ta uh, tails yeah so um, looks like we continue to develop our application yeah and um, okay looks like we've done our uh, lesson so see you on the next video bye let's check our link in the main, main navigation and you can see that right now we have just links uh, from Next.js and uh, how we styled this link. You can see in the main, main navigation this uh, link uh, selector and we just uh, add right over here styles that we need. But I want to remind you that we have this component styled link that we can 
uh, use in any other uh, places yeah and uh, let's refactor this uh, styles in the layout let's just drop link uh, from the main navigation yeah I mean we just drop styles that uh, apply styles uh, for these links and then let's just use the same pattern yeah we just drop our styled link by next JS link and right now I believe that everything should works by the same way but with this common link styles and let's fix this opacity to 0 0.7 uh, because I want to make a little bit more interactive these elements and one, one more fix that I want to apply it's about this error we have this uh, check the top level uh, render call using style diff. We have, uh, we should have uh, each uh, item in the list uh, should have um, a unique key property, and uh, it's about our uh, page. Um, yeah page uh home and we have this course and we actually have just list yeah we generate uh array of uh courses and then render it to the home page but we have no any key property right over here that we of course need to apply let's just use mass dot random to generate some unique uh identity for every course in this list and let's just check it again in the browser okay so and here we go right now i need just to uh clear this output and reload my page okay okay we can see the same error now but right now we have uh two children with the same key yeah how can we fix this trouble and probably i know what uh we can do with this because right now we have fill yeah but fill just uh repeat the same value as many times as we need for our array so we need first of all just fill and probably by some empty stream and then let's apply map yeah and i believe that we uh actually shouldn't use anything yeah we just uh use map so and let's check that we should close our um just one sec yeah we need just to add one more bracket and right now we have uh this scheme where when we just generate uh, array uh with four empty strings and then we just map these empty strings to a bunch of courses and i believe that right now everything should works fine let's check in the browser okay and here we go right now we have clean console yeah without any problems uh, and we have a unique uh, key for every item in this course list when we click to some course like example we will see this uh, error yeah we have a 404 error this page page uh, could not be found yeah when we click to some link yeah we have the same behavior yeah but this not uh, the same style as our application so let's make our custom uh, 404 error handler page and here we go to make our custom uh 404 error page we need to add file uh with the same name 404.tsx in the pages and i just want to use the same approach just uh provide here stories for our error page yeah uh without any additional requirements it's just a dummy story yeah so and we can stop our web server and let's run a storybook we can see this message on the console that we can update our storybook to the latest version okay we uh come back later yeah so uh right now i just want to open our browser and we will see our error 404 page but we have no any content let's uh make our page uh with uh, content that we really expected 
First of all, let's import styled and then let's create our wrapper that going to use just style div and let's uh, put some uh, styles that we need. Yeah, I just want to use display flex, flex direction column and align items and justify content center. Uh, so height uh, 83 view heights, yeah, to make it uh, just fill all of our widths as well. So then we need to put our wrapper to the uh, custom 404 page. Okay, so we need to return something like this. And we have our uh, logo component, that very great texture that I want to use for this message uh, about error. Let's use it. We just wrapped the logo for all four page node found. And then let's import link from next link and style link from our components. So then under this message, I just want to add a link that lead us to home page. But I just want to customize a little bit our style link. And for these purposes, we need to use a well-known pattern we just call style and provide to the style or style link. And then provide a bunch of styles that we need. I want to apply text decoration underline to mark that this is not a text. It's real link. Click to this link. Okay, and font size 3 rem. So then we can use our custom link, uh, just need to mix it with link and pass href property as, we, uh, as we've been doing all of this time, yeah? Okay, and you can see the result now, yeah? We have this uh, 404 page not found and when we press this go home, we just go to the root location, yeah? And we can easily uh, check how it works in our application. So let's run our dev server. Okay, I just gonna to open one more uh, instance of uh, console. Let's uh, run npm run dev. And then we'll see how it looks in the browser. But uh, of course we gonna to run our Next.js framework. And here we go, yeah, that's our page not found. And when I go to the home page and then click to every link on this page, because I really don't have any other pages uh, instead of this home, yeah, I have this page not found error, yeah, that I can uh, easily, uh, yeah, uh, use and click, like example, to go home, yeah. So, and probably we have small trouble with this uh, bottom interval. Just let's take a look to the style of this uh, div. And we have 83 view heights. Let's add two. Yeah, I believe that it should be two more bits height. And right now everything looks as we expected. Let's just change this value right over here to 85 view heights. And looks like our page 404 just ready and works as we expected. We can switch to the dark mode and you can see that everything works as we expected. Yeah, but we have some troubles between page navigation. We just reset our user preference. Probably we're going to fix it for the future lesson. It's not critical now. Yeah, but you can see that it works by the same way as we expected. Yeah, you can press. We have to possible uh, themes that we can apply for these pages and let's come back to the storybook update and probably we just need to run this uh, um, this command yeah and pick storybook latest upgrade and when we run this process we just need to install uh, requirements and then storybook just update everything uh, without our participation Okay, and then uh, after installation, we can see that Storybook just checking for the latest version of Storybook packages. And then we can see what plan for our updates. Yeah, we update a bunch of add-ons and uh, manager webpack, Storybook Jazz, Storybook React, yes, link plugin Storybook. So then Storybook just going to installing our updates. Okay, and everything has been done by the storybook. Yeah, we can see the result. We have a bunch of dates. Yeah, 
and uh, this updates uh, already fixed in package JSON. We can run our storybook again and just check that everything works fine. At least compilation works fine. Let's check to the browser and you can see uh, our home page. Yeah, here home yeah, and feedback and uh, we can just switch some in this controls. Okay, looks like everything works fine. So, um, okay, looks like we've done it and a little bit more, yeah, than uh, we planned. We update storybook, we, uh, we make our, yeah, we've made our uh, 404 page not found uh, custom error handler page, yeah. So, see you in the next video. Bye. Ursul provides for us deployment system that we can use. So, and you can see that it's just versal.com. We need to press start deploying and then continue with GitHub. We need to make OAuth to allow an access to our repositories. Then you can see that we can import Git repository. So I can see my repository courses box now and we need to press this configure GitHub app. So we need to select an account and then you need to add an access to like example our uh, courses box repository. Right now I have uh, an access to both of these repos we need to save. Okay, so uh, then you can see that we have one more repo, yeah, course box. Let's import this repository. You can add additional settings that we want. Right now I have project name, course box. It's okay for me. Framework preset next chest, root directory root. Okay, looks cool. Um, I don't want to add any additional build and output settings because right now we have this npm run build and npm build. Sorry, uh, npm run build or next build. Okay, I don't want to re um, overwrite uh, this command and output directory default. It's okay. So, um, environment variables, right now we don't need any. Okay, so looks like I can press this deploy button. And right now we have deployment query uh, and uh, deployment started several seconds ago. Right now we have build process. You can look like example to the log that just provide for you complete explanation what happened during this building process. Again, we have build a uh, problem. We have uh, page home stories and page 404 stories. That have no uh, these pages just uh, have no any uh, export uh, React component. Yeah, we have no any real pages because this is just stories. Yeah, and we need to move it probably to some other location. Uh, I've run this uh, build and I have absolutely the same uh, problem. Yeah, in pages uh, home stories and 404 stories. Okay, let's just create stories directory and add uh, these stories to the stories directory. And then we need to replace this location, yeah? Pages index. Okay, so right now it looks very cool. Locally build works fine, yeah? My build looks good. So I need to deploy this fix to the repo. Then I just push the branch with this fix and create pull request on my repo. And you can see that right now automatically we're going to trigger this deploy and we have this message from Vercel bot and we can open our deployment process. Yeah, so just take a look what happened on the deployment side. Yeah, you can see that build works fine right now yeah we have no any troubles uh building time uh one minute uh then just assign the main and uh, push our project to this domain that we can open and you can see how it looks now yeah that's our application and it's on the virtual site yeah it's not my local environment it's courses box dash git dash deploy nikov dot up
Uh, you can see how it looks now yeah our application <laughs> deploys uh, process works fine yeah and you can see that right now we have uh, integration uh, between versal side and uh, between our github repository yeah it's continuous integration that we've already uh, implemented yeah so looks like we've done it and we have our application that gonna to deploy per every uh, pull request yeah and probably i can uh attach uh to our readme right now uh links to my build okay so see you in the next video bye with github actions we can automate uh, chromatic deployment and for these purposes we need to create uh, a github workflow um in your github workflow directory create new file chromatic yaml yeah and then we need to uh, add um, something like this yeah name for our workflow chromatic event for the workflow like example on push or on pull request and list of jobs we just run on ubuntu latest uh, action checkout that switched to the um, state of our file system actual state of file system then install dependencies uh for example in this case we just run yarn we can run npm in our case and then publish to chromatic so let's create this file in the workflows directory chromatic.yaml and let's apply this name uh chromatic so then let's um, add where we should run when we should run this uh, CI action and in case when we push branch master or make pull request on the branch master we just uh, trigger this workflow and then let's create our job chromatic deployment we want to run on Ubuntu latest version uh, this kind of steps for this job and first step it's just action checkout we just check out to the uh, version of this commit that we gonna to deploy or that we gonna to make pull request on so for the next step we just install dependencies um, run npm install and then just run publish to the chromatic and we use for this purpose uh, chroma ui action version 1 and for this process we just use chromatic project token yes yeah, secrets chromatic project token that we need to create on the github for our repository in settings tab we have this secrets actions and we can create new repository secret chromatic project tech token for the name of this secret and on the chromatic side we have this manage and here we have configure tab where we have this project token we can copy and paste this project token to our secrets yeah but i just reset or like example let's copy it on clipboard and then let's put it to the value right over here yeah then you just need to press add secret and you just add this secret token to your ci cd process but i just reset this token to make it private okay just press save button and we have this chromatic project token yeah so then i just gonna to create new pull request and you can see how it looks now right now we have this um, chromatic uh, deployment yeah we can look to this job and we right now have this step install npm dependencies and then we're gonna to publish uh, to chromatic our uh, stories yeah okay here we go right now I have trouble with uh, publish to chromatic you can see that uh, we have error uh, a lock where we just uh, cannot find module webpack leap util makes realizable and i have absolutely the same issue uh, i mean storybook uh, has absolutely the same issue on um <clears throat> and we have this cannot find model webpack leap and uh, util makes realizable it closed uh, and i probably see some uh, possible fix let's just try to add this option typescript react dot uh, doc gen uh, false 
Okay, you can see how it looks now. Let's make a commit and then just push our branch. And when I push, I have this uh, recompilation, yeah, and rerun of our CI CD. Okay, and I have one more error, yeah. It's error about eight test failed to render. And I can look to the build and we can look to the button like example, danger button. And we have matched error. A received value must be a mock or spy. And we can look to the storybook that we have already been deployed. And you can see that in the interactions tab, we have this expected undefined uh, have been called. Yeah, and that's the problem. Yeah, problem with this just mock. And actually, I've already found this trouble, yeah, much as error, and this bug uh, have no any, it has no any resolution, yeah. We have just bug, probably after several iterations, it's going to be closed, and we have some possible solution after some iteration, but right now we have no. So... Uh, actually, we have deployed a uh, version of our storybook. We, yeah, we deployed uh, our input, our feedback. Yeah, but this kind of trouble that we cannot fix now. I have only one fix on my mind. Just to comment our uh, check of our function that have been called. Yeah, and add this kind of to do. Okay, and we have troubles in switch stories. We just command this on change to have been called in input stories, in icon button stories, and in the checkbox and button. Yeah, just uh, completely uh, drop some part of our checks. Then we're going to make commit and deploy it to the GitHub site. Yeah, so let's check uh, how our deploy works now. Yeah, let's just wait in until our uh, build and deploy uh, will be done. Sometimes you can face with the same kind of trouble when you want to be on the top uh of the technology stack it always can be some potential troubles and risks when you can have some bugs that you cannot resolve now so probably in some time uh this bug going to be fixed and we just um, restore our uh, functionality of our tests and you can see that right now everything works fine yeah we can check um uh, how it looks on our CI and you can see that here we have this UI tests that we need to uh, pass before we can move forward yeah and right now we can review our changes yeah and you can see the inspection yeah okay right now it looks cool let's move forward uh, you can see next story okay it looks like it's 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 good enough yeah so here we have icon icon button okay we have feedback uh valid feedback uh primary input yeah it looks cool okay so let's move forward uh this icon uh this invalid feedback okay, actually everything looks cool yeah everything looks as i really expected yeah because i just have new version of these components yeah so i just probably need to accept all but I just want to make it step by step. Okay, so looks like we have good build. Yeah, good enough to merge. Okay, so let's uh, move backward to our uh, repository. And you can see after this check, we have all checks have passed. Okay, we can merge our pull request without any problems. Yeah, we have deployed version of um, our application and also we have storybook published per every deploy. Okay, so see you. Let's create one more workflow to check our project using test cases and yes, linked. Let's uh, make name check and uh, we're going to trigger our workflow when we push branch master or when we create pull request on the branch master. And let's add option workflow dispatch that allows us to run uh, our workflow manually from the actions tab. So then let's create a job 
to and name it as test and lint uh, run this job on the Ubuntu latest and then let's describe steps first of all we need to make checkout uh, just to uh, apply uh, just to check out to the actual state of file system then let's just install dependencies uh, run npm install for these purposes and last but not least let's run project test cases uh, npm test and let's run project linter just to check that everything um, looks cool from the code uh, format perspective yeah let's call this job lint and so we have uh, this whole workflow to check our project uh, we install dependencies run test cases and linter so then let's make commit and push our changes so then let's create new pull request just make compare and pull request okay so says so the test and lean config okay let's create this pull request and we will see that we have file changes we have this check yaml uh, with uh, name of this job check and um, uh, you can see whole uh, configuration that we uh, we've done yeah and um, let's check how it looks from the um, ci cd perspective and right now you can see that we have a uh, versal deployment that uh, has completed we have this uh, chromatic deployment and check uh test and lean uh run yeah so we can look to the details we need to press this link and you can see steps that we need to do uh, for this job in case when we want to trigger our jobs manually we need to open this uh, actions uh, tab and you can see here we have this uh, chromatic yeah and our check action yeah that you can um, run or uh, in manual mode yeah or rerun in case when you have some troubles okay let's check uh what we have now and we have uh broken uh check test and lean job okay let's check how it looks and you can see the whole log right over here yeah we have test and right now we fail uh on course test uh ts6 it's just because of uh, snapshots. Yeah, we have different snapshots. As far as you remember, we just uh, we uh, updated our links. Yeah, and right now we have different models. Yeah, we have unified links uh, style. So and the same trouble with layout. Yeah, and we styled link. Yeah, we just need to update snapshots. I can run uh, this uh, watch all tests. Yeah and then we will see the result yes you can see absolutely the same result and we have troubles with links yeah right now you can see that classes for our links just has been changed we need to update our snapshots just press u to update failing snapshots yeah so we have uh three snapshots that has been updated okay so let's make commit and then push our changes okay just make commit and then just push our changes to the github site okay so uh right now we just rerun our uh ci cd uh flow and uh, we'll be waiting until everything uh will be done during this uh run yeah during this cicd checks let's just make a branch protection rules we need to go to the settings tab and we have uh, branches uh in the left menu uh here we have branch protection rules and we can add uh some rules that we need yeah so we can uh apply branch name pattern like like example master branch uh we need like example uh pull request uh before merging here we have one more check require approvals but i have no any 
approver uh, in my repo yeah so and we have require status check to pass before merging okay and then we can select what jobs uh, need uh, to be passed before merging like example chromatic deployment yeah okay and uh, we have uh, this uh, test and build yeah or check um, or test and lint okay this test and lint okay so looks like a good uh, contract and we have ui uh, tests yeah in case when we have some troubles from the chromatic side yeah we need to uh deploy to the chromatic side run test and link and it should be successful jobs ui tests and uh, we have one more yeah it's versal deploy yeah let's uh, include versal deploy uh so whole uh, of this list should be uh passed before we merge our pull request to the master branch so then i need to press this create button confirm everything by my password and we have this branch protection rules yeah and right now you can see that i cannot merge before uh, i just uh, deploy to the chromatic site my storybook and before we pass our ui tests yeah so it's very important to uh, make all of necessary uh, checks uh, because we cannot be sure without any confidence interval that our application works fine in case when we haven't know any deployment or test cases that should be passed we can face with some troubles in real applications so it's quite easy and quite simple to make these deployments processing and when we have uh, all of these checks that have passed we can merge our pull request okay so i can press this button and confirm merge okay everything looks cool i can delete this branch so looks like we've done it okay so see you Let's make small review. What do we have now? And we have fully functional application uh, with deployment, yeah. And you can, um, of course, uh, make a fork or press start button uh, for this repository courses box. Uh, in the about uh, block, you can see coursesbox.versal.app, and we can open this link. Yeah, just check that everything works fine yeah okay you can see that it's just fully functional application yeah uh, with custom 404 error pages we have two themes uh dark and light mode yeah you can uh see how it looks now uh so uh also we have a fully functional uh continuous integration and continuous uh delivery uh it means that we have bunch of check yeah so you can uh look what what do we have yeah we have chromatic deployment we have uh test uh, cases and link check we have um, versal deployment yeah and uh, you can look to the whole uh code that we have on this stage and per every uh step on this course we have pull request that you can check that you can look through and um, i try to make it uh, as strict as possible yeah for every lesson we have uh this pull request with this basic description yeah so uh just press star button just make forks and see you on the next block of this course friend uh and on the next block we're gonna to make something very very interesting okay so see you